Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another sweaty edition of the Classic Quest podcast. Ooh, it's going to be a sweaty one today. It's your boy, HSR. It's your boy, Chris Chrome. It is your sweaty lady friend, Bonnie. And oh. we say that because <laughs> in Montreal today, it feels like 40 degrees something it's Celsius. 40, 48, and I try and Which you guys need to understand it's about. 98 degrees. Montreal heat. Yeah, well, once you've got whatever, whatever your heat is, is that it's humid heat up Sorry. here, man. You got that nice dry heat out in like places like Cali and stuff where the number Arizona. goes high, but it feels nothing like what we're suffering through. No. New like, Yorkers, you feel our pain. Like Everybody in books? Brooklyn, you know what's up. I've been to Brooklyn during a heat wave. It's awful. So y'all get it, but I'm just putting it out there. It is one of those, one of those. <laughs> in addition to that, we don't have a fan in the room. And, it, and it's a closed box with closed windows and shit. So, yeah, we're going to do this But thing. we did leave the window open, kind of. Sort of. Anyway, um, that's not why you guys came here. So let's do that little housekeeping stuff in the beginning. Um, if you want to skip that, hit that description down below, and you'll see every song and what we talk about it. Because we go through the album track by track, giving our thoughts, our impressions, our opinions, and then we move on, and then we wrap up and do the whole thing, a little summary at the end, and psh, then we're done. And that's how this shit normally goes. Uh, we say that just to manage your expectations. We're not like the super scholars of hip hop, you know, that have been at this for a long time. We're learning as we go. So just take that with a grain of salt. We're trying to learn as we go. And the comment section is a great place for you to uh, help us by correcting us and, you know, giving us fun tips and stuff based off of whatever we end up saying. Mm hmm. As an example of how much we love the comments, why don't we read one from last week's video on Dr. Dre's The Chronic. And this one is from Super Old School 1994. There's actually a debate on who started the quintessential G-Funk sound. See, I didn't know that. I don't even <laughs> thought to Google that. Um, Cold187, who I from Above the Law, who I know from Psychopathic Records, a duo on the Ruthless label, states that uh, it was taken from him by Dr. Dre, but there's actually no hard evidence to support his claim of this happening. G-Funk was started in 91 with uh, the album For Life by N.W.A., classic album as well. We should definitely probably go ahead and do that. Yep. Then there's a song, Always Into Something, that has a funky beat with the whiny synth, uh, that Bonnie doesn't seem to like based off of her assessment on Let Me Ride. True. She's true, like Lil' Kim says. <laughs> um, this whiny true. synth usage all started in 1991. Oh, I think I said that. With, well, the beat produced by Dre, Cold187 would, in my opinion, take this sound to a much more grander approach with the Above the Law album, Uncle Sam's Curse, released in 94 during the pinnacle of G-Funk. I listened to this review two days ago, and now that I have time to leave a comment, great review, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I promise I don't pick them because they're complimented. I'm happy to read one where you talk <laughs> shit. I picked them because it's fucking interesting stuff that was said there, stuff right. I didn't know. And just to give you an example of how much I fucking love it. Like, if you it, call us stupid, please back us up, with, yeah. back it up with some information for like, us so that we can be, like, a little stupid. bit less stupid. Cold 187 fucking invented this. If you had done any research, you would. Even that's, like, a good <laughs> comment because it, it says the same core content for me to go look up after the fact. But, see, what we don't know is what to Google. We can Google, but Google's a big place with lots of answers. Anyway, that's not why you're out here. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Linda Williams, Mozart, Mozart. Quick shout out to our patrons. Talk about that at the end of the video. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be hot and sweaty. So let's do it. Let's get into it. Mr. Christopher, why don't you introduce the album that we'll be talking about tonight? So for this uh, week's Classic Quest album review, we decided to go with Ghostface Killer's album Iron Man featuring Raekwon and Capadonna. Mm, three mm -hmm. dapper lads on that cover, throwing yep. it out there. Yep, Very yep, bright. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to assume, just based on some knowledge I might have, that you guys are familiar with Mr. Ghostface Killer at this point. Yes. Yes. Uh, how do y'all feel about Ghosty Ghost going into this? I, I kind of, I'm expecting loud, aggressive in your face. I'm expecting... Uh, a sweetheart track at one point because of one of them uh, off of the Wu-Tang uh, Wu -Tang album we got. Uh, you got Ghostface kind of being a little bit nice. Uh, I'm expecting some gangsterism, but more messages overall. From so what do you, do you like Ghostface Killer or not? I, I, I do. I do. Okay. I enjoy it. 
Because that was a strange answer to that, like, I question. I apologize. I'm trying to use as many brain cells as I have at the moment. <laughs> <I'm> okay. <laughs> They're melting in this fucking All right. Heat. And do you, are you, do you, have you listened to a Ghostface album before? Not a, I mean, not an official Ghostface album by, like, Ghostface. I've listened to Wu-Tang. We've done the Wu Tang albums that we've reviewed. Mm. We but not, uh, like... totally butchered "Only Built for Cuban Links" at oh, one yes. point, and that has been a point of uh, calling us out for a few people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. So, uh, and you? Do you um, like them? I mean, like I was. I mean, I know that Ghostface Killer is a bit more of like a bit more like gentle. Let's say, you know, like he's he's more of like a, a sentimental person. I think you know he's a sweet ki- kind of guy. But um, I've never been a fan of, or I've yet to have been a fan of, um, anything really that the Wu have done. Like they're just like their vibe, their their style. It's just not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Um, you know, we, we've done Raekwon, we've done uh, Jizza. You know, we've, and I, we've, liquid swords. Yeah, you know, we've covered a couple of them, and like, eh, like I, I just kind of, I don't know. There's something about them that just doesn't Tical. like Tical. pull me in. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, I was priest. expecting... True, we did do Heavy Mental. Same sort of, like, album with this one. Um, that's fair. I like Ghostface Killer. Um, I've listened to a, bu- a few of his stuffs here and there since we started this woo because he's just so, like, interesting, right? Like, the thing I noticed about Ghostface is you really feel like you're in his mind and you're really just getting this raw motion blast from him in every right. single verse. And yeah. I think, whereas Raekwon is a little, like as an example, I feel like he's a little more of a cool cucumber spitting some venom and stuff. Well, like, like Ghostface Rayquan's is more of that also, passion, you know? I feel like Raekwon also portrays like this mafioso type. Like he's a harder and, and kind if of I'm guy. more mobbish than and, and Ghostface. And Wu fans out there, if I'm wrong, this is just my brief impressions with them so far. Um, I like to say... Uh, the one thing I was kind of like before going into this prepared for was that like it's a woo album fundamentally woo. more than it might woo. like woo. it is the ghost face album <laughs> but as we get through this there's a couple of times where you're like nope this is like a woo feeling more than it it's is it's basically not the woo but it is the woo but I think, I well, think there's, that's... A, there's at least like two songs I think that don't even have ghost face rapping at all on them yeah as it, that's what I mean like it's like it's weird in like my understanding of how albums are from where we come from in the more modern era right. where that would be like foreign but like this collective moving and stuff and like I guess that was something we were a little bit like weird about on Only Bill for Cuban Links. But I was just like, I was just cool with it. This I just didn't care. I just wanted to hear what it all sound like. That's kind of how I went into this one. Um, but I like the cover because I know what I, yeah. I could recognize them for the first time. I looked at it, I was like, oh, there's Ghost on the on the right, and there's Raekwon. And then by process of elimination, I figured Capadonna's out which one Capadonna yeah. was. But I just, they look so fucking 90s. They're it looks so, so awesome. They look like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. like it's it, so bright. They've got chains on and they try to be cool, but they look like and it, and it's, kids it's with like this think, neon. It's funny to see that a little bit for me because it's like you figure like heavy gangsters and like we're going to run up on you and no, 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 no. It'd be all dark. And then and it's like. I'm gonna run up on you on my triple colored, <laughs> my triple colored jacket. And, like, you can just, spot me from afar. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, on the other hand, that's kind of bold. No, of course. Yeah. Of course, I, I'll give them. But that it, as is well. it is also like bold. the, the it is, time, like, like the style of the times. You know, like right. Fair enough. Um, I like this cover though. I feel like it. it they're like buying shoes. Like, oh, I thought they were standing in a bank first. No, those are all yeah. shoes, man. And they're like sitting there in like a shoe store, or it's their whatever. Maybe it's the thing, and it just it just looks like they're having a good time here. Like it's just for it's introducing just Iron Man. And I like the idea of of like Ghostface Killer being Tony Stark. You know, like I love the idea of him in terms of a Marvel character. Like I like that. Like to me, like he's flamboyant, he's loud, he's flashy, but he's kind of like a pure good soul at the end of the day. Okay. And I thought okay. that was really okay. cool. Maybe I'm misinterpreting the connection there. But I, I, that's what I got to, and I enjoyed that with just the title, Iron Man. It made me really excited to listen to this project. I know some people thought Supreme Clientele was a better album from the comment sections, but it didn't seem right to start there when we could start with Iron Man, which which came first, you know? Fair anyway, enough. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a bunch of tracks to talk about, so let's uh, let's move into the heavy metal world with Iron Maiden. All right, let's do it. Poly, admit it back, stay crocheting. Hey, yo, iron, these niggas crocheting, but happy pain. As you all have come to see in recent episodes, when there are facts to be shared, I like to start with fact time. 
So I was really into the idea <laughs> of like um, this little movie because because uh, Aaron over on Facebook he comments sometimes he sent me this clip of. Uh, this movie scene and I'm like wait a second that sounds really familiar because I had told him what album we were reviewing and uh, turned out to be this exact clip but now I'm looking at this little these little kids as I'm like watching this little introduction piece uh, play out yeah. and I was like okay so I got kind of cool and then like you hear the woo pick up and it's in this Wu-Tang group it's just fun because they just post woo shit all day um, but it's uh, taken from this movie The Education of Sonny Carson mm -hmm. which is really fascinating because um it kind of is one of those tales where this kind of plays out after the kid's been released from jail. But in the beginning of the movie, I didn't watch it. I read the synopsis. He, like, goes to jail, and then he meets the next guy. He ends up being in a gang, and, you know, the gang situation goes up. But then he kind of evolves past the gang, changes his life, and legitimately the real person ends up going into New York politics and shit like that. And it was, like, super interesting that I That's found cool. out that it's, like, this little clip is... um. <clears throat> almost based off of a real person, you know? And then uh, it got me just kind of wondering if the context of, like, the album that I'm supposed to be picturing it is, like, Ghostface Killer is a kid from, like, this really rough circumstances who's now flipped his life into something different, right? Right. And I got all of that just because I went and read the movie synopsis of this little clip and I looked into it and just kind of, like... Because it is kind of gangster sounding. It's these two little kids, you know, it just kind of sounds a little... You cool. smoky. If you ain't smoky, you ain't getting the letter. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, like, this little message and whatever. And then, it, then like, the song, um, some Al Green uh, samples pick up and mm -hmm. it was, like... I don't often love the beats, but before I pass it off to Chris to, you know, do his thing, that beat is fucking fire, man. That thumping, doom, 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 doom kind of feel to it. Absolutely. I don't know, man. I was so fucking pumped just off of that introduction a little bit and the beat in a really big way. All right, Chris, how do you feel? Um, I like the intro. It sets up, like you said, it sets up the tone of the album, what we're going to be getting, what we're trying to look at. I as well kind of took it as uh, Ghostface Killer comes up from like a really uh, uh, hectic environment, uh, dangerous environment. As a kid, he had to be kind of rebellious and stand up for himself even at a young age. That's kind of what I took from the intro sample from that movie. Um, great, great beat. Really uh, produced well. There was, there's, you've, you've got this sense of like not so much in your face but like kind of like we're stunting like we're we're here we're mate where we got stuff to say but we're not like in your face yet like we'll like it's gets to come um i like when uh one of the lines capadonna says is uh every evening i have uh a by myself meeting thinking who's gonna be next to catch a beating from my mental slang and bitch rap twist the point of w uh, warfare and i like that line because it really shows like there are well, at least Capadonna, it shows that he's super focused on trying to master his craft. He's trying to uh, be better at what he does. And um, he's always ready for a rap battle. That's not what I took. He's always ready to fight. He's always ready to lay somebody down and tear up an MC. That was really cool. Um, Ghostface Killer. Um, I I like the concept of when he went uh, hitting white label, left the Winnebago, unsta uh, unstable, smooth sailing, walked in my earth kneeling. And I like how he referenced his uh, his woman as the earth, as like his universe, his world, his everything. Um, it's also, a, I think it's like a, a term from uh, the, the gods and the earth. It's like this, uh, this story or something that he, he was... Uh, it was anyway. It's it has to do with something he believes in. It's a metaphor or something, uh, but I, I I took it as like different different uh, metaphors as well. Like you could think of it as it, it's it's holding him down. He he's happy to be home. He's happy to be there. He's got somebody backing him up. He's got he's got that protection. Um, overall, I felt like they're just also coming in and standing their ground and making sure like you know Wu Tang is here to to do what they got to do. I left the song at a four. Cool. And Miss Lady Fran Bonnie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, basically the same kind of thing, um, you know, starts off with the movie clip. Um, and, like, the kids are, like, gangsters, troublemakers. Like, they're, you know, they're obviously, like, very, like, tough kids and, you know, whatever's going on. Um, and then this song is sort of, like, basically about kind of, like, the illegal shenanigans that they're, like, up to and, like, involved in drugs and, like, how badass and, like, crushing their rhymes are. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just like the, um, the police siren is like part of the beat. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, I know I, I think a lot of people probably don't enjoy that when it's, you know, especially driving around. They think, uh, you know, there's a car you know, somewhere. But um, I thought it sounded cool. Um, and he kind of like, you know, he goes to like destroy the competition. And it's very like raw sounding, which seems to be very much like the woo again. Like it's very like a, a raw sound that they like to put out. Um uh, I like this one, basically. The beat was very interesting, S- same thing as you guys were saying. Um, I didn't really catch everything the first time. I had to, you know, go back a couple of times and listen to this because I just found, like, the, the the rhymes were so fast. I think everything was just being, like, spitting so fast. And so I didn't really catch it all. Um, I really liked this. It was a very interesting uh, introduction, so I gave it a 4.25. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think part of what really drove it is that beat comes in, thumping, and it sounds like, technologically at least a step above what was previously we've heard just like yep. in the chronological because this comes after only built for cuban links and Tikal, and i think maybe even after liquid swords and so like maybe just shit's gotten a little tighter uh riz has gotten a little better i don't know i really enjoyed well, just the, like just time has passed right but I, I don't know i really loved this the overall quality of the production that came out on this um and then it really just it's so fast paced hard hitting what i notice is raekwon is really into like i feel like he rhymes so with such fervor that it's incredible like ao iron these portraying but haven't been paying for real slide on these like a fresh pair of caesar fade style usually tuck grenade and you're just like whoa like he's managing to make all these things rhyme but like every little chunk is just almost like pivoting ideas so quickly that in like three to four words they communicate like an entire sentence's worth of ideas you know mm-hmm. throw a blade fuck getting laid guzzle as shit like gatorade and then day to the wallies half leather half weight apparently wallies are shoes didn't know that um connecting with the high style is done light up a chalice and i'm just like I don't know. I have, I'm not 100% sure what a lot of these lyrics mean, so I'm not really going to go that hard into um, trying to analyze that part. I find that's kind of like like the theme of this album. Like some of it just doesn't really make sense or you're not really oh, sure no, about it, certain like certain songs, I find. I feel like it's more like there's just so much being like packed into the ideas, right? Like, I mean, you can kind of get the sense, even in this little part, all right, where somebody's kind of faking it, they're not paying their dues or their drugs or whatever it is. Like, I'm not really sure. And, you know, they got to come up on them and with while they are looking fly and I guess take them out with a grenade of source and then throw a blade probably in terms of like rapping or maybe literally you know fuck getting laid I guess that's you know getting fucked or whatever yeah and like you start like really like having to do these mental gymnastics to like break it down so unfortunately I I don't have that ready for like every fucking song that's a lot of songs (laughs) to do that for but like the fact is on every song I feel like they just consistently deliver this level of analysis required for the lyrics which is really fucking cool there's also not a lot of swearing like there's a lot of like tracks where like it almost feels like they don't what they're saying is maybe in the ballpark of maybe just as bad as swearing to some people like they'll talk about guns and drugs but just somehow not say fuck shit or bitch or anything in certain songs and i'm like blown away because their vocabularies are so diverse it's always enthralling to me as like my, my interest in linguists in linguistics is just you can't if you like language it's hard to not like the wu-tang in my opinion or they have these like references like we upgrade swallow raw eggs which is right before what chris did and i, I took that as like a rocky thing where like they do the raw eggs to get stronger and right. shit right yeah and then you know all that other stuff um I don't really understand the Michael Bolton magazine quote part, but I love the way it's like kicked up Mac Max Motion Michael Bolton magazine quote. I'm too potent. Louisville mix pain kill rap. It's like, fuck. It's just so good. Um, I think that was Ghostface. And Ghostface is so fluid and so like raw with his passion. I just like, I love it. And then Capadonna, it seems like he's a little more on the intellectual side, trying to like, I guess he sounds a little bit. More, more on the nerdier side than the other two. Not saying less hard, but just more intellectual. Hmm. Like, I could blow the skyline with a stormy wind blue. Uh, one gallon of wielding Park Hill profiling. I cut your face a buck fitty. Sure, why you smiling? Not on, maybe on this song, but on a few other ones for sure. Uh, for violating my position, I leave you smoke like a crackhead on a mission. Two tokes of Mike Dope. Fuck, eh? Because you got to consider this. I'll leave you smoke like a crackhead on a mission. Two tokes of Mike Dope. You know, like... 
you'll listen to his music and get fucking taken on in a battle with him, and he'll turn you into a decrepit fucking crackhead when he's done with you. Fucking good stuff, man. I don't know. Pretty much any line in that verse also comes in um, with the same level of flow and stuff. They all have their little bit of differences between them, which actually makes them all sound significantly different. So when you have them verse to verse to verse, it's almost like, you know, as much as I really love Ghostface, these three sound really fucking great together, you know, and I thought it did really well. I don't know, for me, this track's a four and a half on five. I really fucking like it. I definitely like instantly felt myself like an attraction to the sound that is on this album and i was really excited for this hmm, cool do we all do we all give grades yep um wildflower orange baby just being with law told you how to eat the right foods fast and don't eat law i gave you earth. the internet told me that this is a rare moment in 90 or in the woo life where it was one of the first times a member of the clan showed any kind of real vulnerability yep and um it's also an excellent display of Ghostface Killa's uh, storytelling in the way he comes in with this little track. Yeah, I mean, like, the way he told it is pretty, like, it's pretty good. Like, he's obviously, like, knows what he's up to. Like, uh, No Smoke in the Lungs is the first thing you hear after this little clip from JD's Revenge where, okay, so I actually watch this clip. So, um... The girl is lying in bed naked, and there's some sleazy-looking gang. You know, you know those like '70s black exploitation movies, and he just looks like one of those guys from the movie, and he's all greasy acting. And then you know that plays out, and then the guy gets home, right? And that's where like Ghostface Killer throws in his little line, like whatever he does in this on there, mm-hmm. he adds his little lyric. But then it's the worst fight scene. I mean, it's it's not the worst. It's so funny. He like pulls out this knife and he starts cutting the guy in each of his arms and his legs and stuff and whatever. And I just watched all that. It's like a three minute scene. It's it's really it, it helped me enjoy the song a little bit more. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Just just sounds a little bit ridiculous. It made me want to like go watch some more of those movies and just understand because that must be such a part of this culture, right? Like you know, I mean, the same people who created this art must have watched those movies, you know? Right. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, do you want do you want to take this one first? Um. All right. Um. So it's it's like basically like so at the beginning we get a scene. Um, about a woman with a man, and she's, like, cheating uh, with him, and yeah. then her boyfriend comes home. And then he gets cut. Yeah, and then there's, you know... By the guy who was cheating with. Yeah, so it's basically just about, like, getting revenge, I think. Um, Jamie Summers sounded really nice on the song. I liked, uh, I like her voice. Um, so I think it's sort of, like, the girl betrayed him, um, and he's kind of pissed off, and he kind of talks about, like, how... They used to have, like, really intense sex and, like, how, like, she worshipped him and it was kind of kinky. Um, and, like, she cheated on him, it seems. Like, I wasn't really sure. Um, and, like, you know, a woman's just doing what she's got to do, right? You know? <laughs> and he's just kind of, like, bragging about, like, the great sex that they had. So I didn't really know if, like, he was just, like, missing it or if he was trying to, like, get revenge. But, like, I don't I didn't really know. It sounds cool. Um, overall, and like the storytelling of this was interesting, but like I feel like I kind of missed a part of it, and I went back and was like, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, and yeah, so it sounds kind of cool, and it sounds like there are, and like which it could be because like you know they they base a lot of their stuff off of like kung fu type movies and stuff like that. So it sounded to me, if you guys know what I'm talking about, like those like Chinese balls that you like move around in your hand that make that like oh, tiny yeah. noise that's what it yeah. sounded like to me in this song like as was kind of in the background so yeah anyways i gave it a four on five it was a it was an interesting song it was cool so i totally think the song plays out like this because it starts with him going yo bitch i fucked your friend yeah so you're like wow ghost so, like, there's some sort of revenge going so, on but, like you don't know that at first he just kind of sounds a bit like an asshole right because he goes up to the girl and he's like yeah you stank ho I seen her on the elevator, honey grab my kangle, whatever. She put me to the mega shit, but to slot the bitch, she shot crazy verbal. I lean back like I'm rich. So he's kind of going up and uh, describing the situation where he's fucking this next girl, etc. But then you get like the real crux of what happened. Just got back from Honolulu, pocket stacking Boku cash. Girlfriend stepped off the Yuhu and laughed. Uh, yo, while I was on tour, whore, you went to work. And then we find out that he's kind of getting home and this happened. Yeah, but it's only because 
And then we find out she was doing some stuff on the side while he was away, doing the nice thing, you know, putting the bacon on it. Well, I guess not really well, bacon. Well, he was on tour. He, he doesn't was away. like bacon. So um, the turkey bacon on the table. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if that expression works. But um, and then he kind of goes in and the whole part in the middle with the sex and whatnot, he's really saying, like, look, you know how much I fucking liked you? I fucked you while he was bleeding on my dick. You know how much I liked you? I taught you how to eat the right foods. And then I, I taught you how to, like, kind of, like, give you these 5 or that earth lessons. Like, I, I don't fully understand the 5% Yeah, this movement. is the 5% again. Like, and if you guys have any literature you can recommend, I feel like it would be very helpful. Somebody it's out like there. the 5% are, like, the people who know and, like, are willing to share the information with the rest of the world. But I'm not really sure what they know. Yeah. Like, so. they know all the truths. I feel something. like at some point I'd love to delve more into that because it seems so crucial to such a large part of hip hop. Um, but yeah, and then he kind of goes through and, you know, you was my main shit. My peep showed you love on the strength. You saw how I got down the way I thought I had you tranked, but you had to fuck this lobster at. Uh, lobster, lobster head ass. I should have slapped him, but the god said chill. And that was interesting. You. Yeah, right. So he's freaking out, right? But what happened really was is people said, no, it's not the way you treat a woman or, you know, whatever. It's That's not, not how you handle the situation. There's better ways. So yeah. instead, he writes this really angry poem where he or he fucks her friend, which is a little more acceptable. <laughs> and uh, he he kind of calls her on it. And what I can tell you about this is this feels like a real thing, you know? Like, it just it feels like Ghostface like actually went through this, and this is the argument that came out, like, like or whatever. And he, or, or instead of going to her, he went straight to the studio, and he just said everything he wanted to say to her. Yeah. And it felt so honest and genuine and real and... He really is this romantic sweetheart. Like, he really is like this, you know, I mean, he's got all the hardship for sure. But it's so interesting just to see this side of him. So, like, track two on the album, you know? He's very passionate, you can also say. Like, he holds on to his emotions and he and he he knows, he, he, he shows that he knows what he wants. And if it fucks up, he, he wants to handle it the way he wants to handle it, right? Yeah. It's a five. It is... It is almost everything I love in music put into a little box. You give it a four point five. That's all, that's all you have to say. I I don't really have much to say about it. I I like the song as for what he is doing. I like the fact that he's taking this platform to vent. Um, I like how he acknowledged, like you know, I do have that anger in me that I wanted to hit you, but luckily, like you know, somebody um, somebody stopped me and made me realize, like there's other ways. Like he kind of taught us like a life lesson, like you don't have to do certain things. You got to look different paths, alternatives. Um, I like the setup uh, with the with the with the scene at the beginning. Uh, overall, it was it was a good song, and I'm and I'm glad that you know we got to experience an actual fight, like. Like like you said, you like this what? this seems very real and honest. You want to talk about fights, Chris? I got the faster blade. All right, Bonnie, how did you feel about Ray Ray? All right, so here we have no uh, ghost face killer on this uh, track. It's just Raekwon. I think it's Kill La. Kill La? Yeah. Kill La? Yeah. They get mad if Killa? we say the names wrong. Killer? Huh? You don't. Uh, anyways, don't uh, drop the ER. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the ER out of this. <laughs> I just call him uh, G GK. It just works. Okay. Um, anyways, so it, it's just like him kind of just talking about hustling drugs and like basically like him like you know spitting about hustling and the ladies he gets and like how good his rap is and just you know it's only, it's only two minutes to like twenty eight seconds so it's not like the longest song. Um, and he has like the fastest blade, so like that's kind of like a reference to like, again like kung fu or like the samurai sword or like you know like you know I guess the first to draw the blade. I don't know. I never really watched those movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not really into kung fu stuff. I'm not really an expert at that. But for me, like we'll, there we'll wasn't really. We'll rectify that, people of the internet. They, I mean, I've seen a couple, but I mean nothing. Binge watch. <laughs> I mean, I would do that, I guess. Um, so yeah, there's not really, for me there wasn't really much to this one, um, and there was no Ghost Race Killer, so I was like, oh, where is he? Uh, so I gave it a three point five on five. Mr. Christopher, 
you pretty much understood what it was, uh-huh. but I don't think that it's uh, mostly just like uh, kind of flossing. Like I feel like he's he's explaining that he's quicker on the streets than other people. Uh, other MCs don't have the same moves as him. They're not going to shoot first. They're not going to pull out the blade first or whatnot. Uh, he's got like um, he's got the the slickest product. Um, I like the the connection with the movie. I, neither have I. I've never seen the movie or whatnot. But I like that they're using that kind of the title and trying to emphasis on that. It's probably something that they may have enjoyed watching or they've hmm. seen multiple times. Of course, it inspired them. Um, I like when he went, uh, we move in like Russia, born, bone crusher, at the flick, stick the usher, broke, spot, um, like cascade and hit in the street, masquerade, faster blade. Like, I like, I like how he's kind of symbolizing, like, look, if you want to start some shit, we're going to have to end it, but we're quicker than you. Like, at the end of the day, don't fuck with Wu-Tang Killer Bees, right? Hey. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of what, like, I got from this, uh, short little two point, uh, two minute and like something second. But I think uh, also, like, the, you know, like the faster blade and, you know, implies that they're going to be winning. Like, they're the first ones there and they're going to, like, of take course. over. They're going to have control. They're going to win. Of course. So I think that that's kind of what it is, too. You know, especially it's like, in, like, the arena of MCs dueling, right? I mean, he's fast paced, right? Like, especially when you listen to some of the other Wu guys on the album, like, Raekwon and Ghostface are both particularly fast paced, cutting like punching like right like it's really like fast oh, compared man. to like the other guys or at least compared to especially because it's not just like like tricky fast stuff like say a tech nine would do it's the dense lyricism mixed with the fast pace constantly updating rhyming and stuff and like it just flows in such a cool way so that's what i got from faster blade just the way he put it and like the song I mean, I think they could just kind of describe his life and, like, always, it's always, like, these series of double entendres, so, like... Kind of like the fast life, in a sense. Well, it's kind of like this past life of, like, his crime, per se, mixed with, like, the rhyme life and the parallels and the crossover, so, right. I don't know, like, Ayo, moving on these, like, the old soul, bro, you know how we go, go we go shift him out, like, Pelico, find protégés of top connecting, like, a building, $4 while it, building, saving the children, it's, like... I'm not 100% sure at a line-by-line line level what all that was saying because I didn't really think about it as much. I was really into listening to him rhyme. And that's something I find has happened in, uh, in some of these albums. It's like I just get so caught up in how they're rhyming that I stop caring as much about what they're trying to say. And then it goes away, and then you start, like, it sinks in, and you start going, oh, that's what he actually had to say there. So that was, like, really fun. Um, I like when he's like, come on now, check out the view, like an oceanfront, slow motion and cunt, taking what we want. I, I just, I really like that view. Like, he's right up in the pussy, and he's doing what he's got to do. I've never heard it quite described like that. I might even be getting it wrong, but that's what I took from it, and I thought it was pretty good. You like your fish fried or battered the day he ratted? <sighs> Just, like, good, man. Like, he's, like, describing what's going to happen to the person, but he, like, brings it up almost so innocuously in the way he phrased it. It's, like, excellent fucking poetry. Or Arabic's moving blow like aerobics. That's when his nose itch. Yeah, that means it's all in effect. I'm hitting you. I'm hitting Buddha. Island Bermuda. Send that 22, 20 shot Ruger. Like, it's just so good. Um, I guess it's a 4.25. Um, the beat was okay. It wasn't quite as, as fun as, like, the last couple have been for me. Uh, and overall, I felt like it was a, snort, a short little Raekwon snippet. It felt really good, but... I much prefer the Ghostface Killer by himself than I do Raekwon by himself. And I'm not saying that anything. I, I don't – I'm not trying to, like, say whatever. I just – I guess I was a little disappointed that Ghostface wasn't here a little bit. Yeah. I got over it, recognized the squad and whatever it is. But the song was like it was a good little Raekwon flossing track, you know? Fair enough. Um, anyway, let's talk about 260. All righty. Where's the fed joke? Knock on daddy old store, get the scope. He's not home. He took Ishmael. Christopher, how'd you feel about this track? Well, it's a very interesting track. Um, that is true. I agree. It uh, it's from what I understand, it's about uh, it's got Raekwon and Ghostface having kind of like a conversation with each other about how they're gonna rob somebody. Um, and they're kind of going through the different various of sorts of events that are happening. Uh, and then they kind of wrap it up, uh, with finding out that this girl named Kiana is actually working with the police and they are, she's trying to set them up and then it kind of flows in, I feel like into the next track. 
Uh, so I feel like this song itself is kind of like just like a build up for a two a two track song. Uh, that was one, two. Um, there's I, I like what they did. I don't know if I quoted the line properly, but I like what they did in terms of put uh, like using words to mean other things as well. Uh, something like we we equality self. I know the master all, and now it's time to get the god yeah and blow like minds. But when you decrypt why e why equality self anyway when you kind of look through the letters it goes yes man gun when you take when you take uh the y the y from y the e from equality the s from self um the m from master the a from allah the n from now and then the g from god and i messed up somewhere <laughs> But there's it the the way they did it is like a code and that was really cool. Uh, but overall, it's it's just really an intro for the next track I felt and I gave it a four. They were okay. Um, I don't know if I I just gotta say I don't know if I actually agree that there's a there really two songs that are are part of the same story. I think that the the, the way they ended the song just happened to thematically flow really well with the title of the next song on how they started it okay. and i think it was like a cool little move there but thematically like this one is like a little story that they're telling right, right. i don't right. know if you want if you want to share your thoughts um yeah so i mean this is it's kind of starts off with like another like old like hood type movie scene that's happening at the beginning um, then, and then the beat kicks in, and the beat is, like, really hype to this one. I really, really like the more beat. more Al Green. Um, yeah, and it's got, like, more, like, horns and drums, and it's just, it's a lot more fun and catchy, but it sounds, like, tough and, like, violent and stuff as well. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, mention that because it's, you know, it, I, I think this one is okay. I think it's not a bad one, you know, for, <laughs> you know, in terms of like the ones I've listened to so far. Um, and so it is kind of about like hustling and, you know, violence and like shooting people and like, you know, and 260 is the, I think the, the, the building number that mm -hmm. there, that he goes to, to, you know, you know, have whatever that he's about to go down is about, you know, kind of like a killing or doing illegal things at this location. And then in the end, he kind of gets like screwed over and there's not really like any reward for like what he did. Um, and yeah, like he, he just, like I said, he just kind of got screwed over. Um, so it was an interesting little story. Again, it's not like like a particularly long song. It's only two minutes, 47 seconds. Um, and yeah, I gave this one a 4.5 on five. I really did like this one a lot, especially the beat. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Ghostface starts us off and he comes in with such energy. I love it. It's so awesome. Um, we got to get him done. Aliens is snatching our bread. UFOs moving in with bigger plants than the feds, yo. So it's worth noting UFOs is like people that are not from your hood that are coming into your hood to operate and do things that you don't want them to be doing. Mm -hmm. So competition would be how it's called in the business world. <laughs> um, but that's the kind of slang shit that's cool, you know? And it's really cool because it plays on the idea of aliens, which is just also having that understanding of aliens as more than just extraterrestrials, you know? Right. Um, knock on Daddio's door, get the scope. He's not home. He took Ishmael to Park Slope. There go the dreads, yo. Swindled two bags at a skunk. They didn't get crashed out. Laid you like bum. So here it's like daddy -O is the house, the person who they're going to rob later on. He's not there at the moment. Fine. They go in, uh, uh, and then it turned out that they, you know, um, found some weed. Or they couldn't find the weed. I wasn't sure. I think that they were looking to steal this weed and then smoke and crash out or whatever. And then in the second verse, Raekwon validates that Kiana, because he references Kiana, goes face at the end of the verse, like Kiana gives him the tip. And then Raekwon's like vouching for her, like word is bond. He doesn't actually say that, but I felt it was appropriate. Right. Uh, Kiana ain't telling no lies. Last year she did a sting and a half with Ty Meek, bought him an aircraft. But anyway, Daddy O's home. We need the shotties now. And then they go in and they basically try to rob him. They've got the guns. They look like terrorists with their masks on, etc. And then where the drugs, where the answers, you'd be bouncing fat, fake cats announcing on the block, you lounge him where the blowout ain't got shit, stop fronting. And then they put the gun in his mouth and shit. And then it turns out there's literally cheese, not like like cheese money. in the sense of money. It's it's more like 
literally there's fucking cheese there and they got kind of goofed off or whatever and then the song kind of ends abruptly flows into the next one and i love the way that the songs transition on this album it kind of creates a fluid movie like experience it's like yeah. almost like they deliberately overlap the first second of the two songs so that there is that connection if you even just listen to the song as an individual file and that's fucking cool um i this a four and a half on five it's a fucking great and thrilling experience in my opinion then there is Assassination Day. Hmm. I bit a roll we nigga. I stole a globe fugitive. Cream a short sea sight for power. Um, so yeah, this next movie clip uh kind of bridges the songs together. It's from the usual suspects, which I finally saw, I think, in the last year or two for the first time. I don't remember anything in it though. So maybe I need <laughs> to see it again. So it's from that. It's quoted a couple of times on this movie, which is cool. Um, then there's a quick sample from a manga I didn't write down the name on, but then um, the noteworthy thing on this track is that there's no uh, ghost face again. It's Rayquan, uh, Rizza, Inspector Deck. Yeah, so we got the, these guys coming in, which is uh, nice because it's like, I'm not saying nice because it's I, like a reunion. I like the idea of what they're doing here, where like as much as it's Ghost Face Killer's album, they're so like part of the clan that it just wouldn't make sense or whatever from what i understood there was a point where like rizzo would make them like battle for beats and shit and whatnot and like they all had to try to have the best rhymes and stuff and i could just like i just wonder if like ghostface didn't have the best rhyme for this song on this album you know like anyway Rizzo's just, just like no 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 you know yeah, this, be. i'm sorry but you got to admit ghosty ghost uh all the rest of these are better and then ghost said Ooh. it's true and then that's, I don't know, that's my imagination running. Um, you got to admit, ghosty ghost. <laughs> uh, how do y'all feel about this one, though? Uh, Chris, go Chris, go. I, I enjoy <laughs> it. I like I like this track. Um, they're all proper. They all have their, their, their fucking nin, ninja coming at you flow. Um, from what I understand, they're kind of just like, they all each kind of take a different role. Uh, some of it's like kind of how they move in the city, how they move in the streets and what they do. Uh, Master Killer, some, he said something that stuck out to me, which was war, war extremely serious. And it saddens me to have to take things in deadly measures and have you measured and shot for no pay. And it's, and it's, I feel like he's trying to allude to the fact that in the environment he's in, there's a lot of danger, there's a lot of uh, hate, there's a lot of negativity, and it's like, we're not even getting paid to kill each other right now. Like, we're just killing each other for X, Y, Z reason, whatever beef is going on. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking more environment-wise. I'm not thinking drug-type-wise. I assume that if there's drugs involved or money involved, it's a different context. Um... So that was something that kind of stuck out to me. Just, you know, I feel like they're trying to give out this message. Like, you know, there's, there's like, you, you guys talk about war that it's so bad, but like, you haven't really taken a second to think about what we're living in and what the savage type actions that happen with us. So that was cool. Uh, Ray Kwan, uh, I liked when he was like, you handle this, you handle this just like algebra, uh, UFO, yeah. Potom like Gal Galaga, holding like bulletproof Acuras. And just even thinking about it, like a bulletproof Acura, like shit, you have to stay protected again. You have to make sure you know you're, you know, you can be clipped at any second. Um, I also played Galaga, so that was fun. That was a cute little nostalgic moment. Um, and I'm assuming when he goes, you handle this just like algebra. It's like algebra is kind of confusing to some people. Maybe they don't really get it. You gotta handle algebra. You gotta get it done. Work out the problem. Solve it. Solve the problem. Boom. We decoded the line. <laughs> proper i landed this track uh at a four 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 yes so at an uncertain four and how about you <laughs> um so yeah we have the usual suspect scene at the beginning um and basically like kind of talking about like profiting off of like the communities of like like these poor people in like the slums and you know often they are you know black um and, you know that's like another issue um, and like nothing kind of gets better. And I think that this, uh, you know, this basically is just a song about how their rhymes like kill the crowds and the comp, like the competitors, I think a little bit. Um, and like they're the assassins, you know, like they're killing it, like they're like destroying everybody else, like no one's as good as them. And 
Um, yeah, the beat on this one was a little bit weird for me. Um, there was like this like weird noise that just keep kept happening. Um, if you know the song, you probably know what the noise is that I'm talking about. Um, so I gave it a three point five on five. Is it the scratchy sound? Like the, the DJ scratch on like a. It's not. It's, it's not the DJ scratching, but there's like mm. a or I don't know. I'd have to listen to it and, and hear it. But anyways, um, yeah. So it's just sort of like a okay like group you know, squad song about, like, them, like, growing up in, like, you know, like, these kind of poor areas um, and, like, how they, you know, now are, like, killing it in, like, a different scene and, like, the rap scene, you know? So that was it. That's fair. Um, Yeah, it kind of is them describing both kind of simultaneously why they're assassins and how they are assassins in their Wu-Tang way. Um, I like how Inspector Dex, like, I move through the third world, my third eye is the guiding light, I invite the fight, we all die tonight. And if that's, like, the hood he's describing, right, you know, and uh, at least maybe how I took it, or maybe right. it's some other shit, but, you know, uh, the life I live's 25 to life bid, uh, parole reneg, they stroll the globe, fugitive, cream is short, see pipe power stock, which apparently means cop for something. <laughs> Plus the fiend talk, three G's and Supreme Court loss, white lies and blackmail allow me back in jail. And you're just like, fuck. It's one of those like, like the environment is just so toxic in the sense that like whatever's going to happen, it's almost like you're almost forced into a situation where you're destined to end up in jail, right? With the life, you know, your pearl is gone. So basically from birth, it's like you're almost like a fugitive roaming around the earth until you get kind of taken out. And then, oh, when you do get to court, it's three grand or whatever. You give us some fucking money. But then because of the corruption of this lies and the way people are, you end up back in jail because of the cycle and how it all just continues and shit. Um, Riza... I'm not a big fan of his flow. I've been told that some people love Riz's flow. I find him jarring. So he comes in uh, and he talks in his Riza way. <laughs> and he just, he just like, he goes out of his way to, like, run a rhyme into the ground. But in a way where it's, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but it almost sounds like he does it too much and it kills the effect of what he's going for yeah, from how I, I perceive that. it. I and I can see how other people love it, but I don't. So, like, I stopped producers' careers. The weak spots was the ears. Scorpion darts hit the mark, pierced the heart with silver spears. You're bewildered. My unsaturated low filters. Devils still feel... I think devils are white people. Still feel this, so you're uh, living, build, tilted. Uh, MCs upon their axis. Their body hazard tactic. Lactic acid. Desert dry cactus practice. I mean, it's okay. I don't have a whole bunch to, like, get out of his verse, really. I think it sounded cool that he comes through and... I respect him as a producer. I really like what he does as a producer. Um, I did uh, like when he goes, Unforgivable snakes face the double-edged sword, start to swivel, decapitate the heads, make the projects more livable. That was pretty cool. It's like take out the toxic fucking snakes and the people who are causing the corruption inside of the neighborhood. Fucking kill them. Decapitate them because that's how you really kill a demon and shit. Yeah. And then, you know, it it improves. So it was really thought out. I just hate how he delivered it. I hate strong, but I don't like how he delivered it. Master Killer, War is Extremely Serious with all that stuff Chris said. And he just kind of comes in with this really smart, like, you really just picture him in his thing. Like, whereas the other ones are a little more, like, almost on that one vibe. Master Killer is, like, you just picture him slow, calm, calculated, and you walk into the room and you you hit the tripwire and you're done. And you never even saw it coming. He's going to assassinate you, like, almost by proxy. Yeah. It's fucking nice. Um, I, I don't know. The beat wasn't stellar, and mostly it was Riza, but I ended up at a 4.25 on this one. Um, it's hot, so let's keep moving on. It feels like I've been struck with a poisonous dart. <laughs> Burn like a laser beam. My vaccine, I shoot a firm and it connects like cybers. Sec- um, so Ghostface is back with a vengeance on this one. It's just him, which is kind of, uh, it might be the second time now that we've had that. It's a little in- irregular. So uh, he comes in with these harsh rhymes. Uh, it starts with a sample clip from the mystery of Chex boxing the movie, and it's Another. quoted by the villain of the film of whom Ghostface Killer got his name from. So he changed it from Killer to Kill La. So Killer is actually the villain in this movie, and Kill La is this rapper known as Iron Man and all this other stuff. Mm, true. Um, 
So, yeah, what the fuck do I got to lose, huh? But just the way he comes in like that. He comes in, like, early, stumbling into the flow almost. Like, I mean, he's done that in a few things, and I love it. Like, he just can't even wait to get on. Like, fuck your part. I'm coming in now. Right. Um, uh, Word to God, let's get it on clap your heel three times. I'm like, are you fucking, like, that's nice, man. Like, grab the magic wand. Uh, Nameless, these stonewashed cats leave them brainless. Some are out the world stranded on Uranus love it oh i know this isn't the right thing i know i know but um in the last track there was a lyric i forgot to mention that was really really fucking worth mentioning it had to do with farting and that's why (laughs) we're gonna do this uh silent as the gases that pass through your anal from uh from uh, mr rizza i just had to say that it's amazing because it's a great fucking because this is an assassination and he's silent but deadly and that might be the best fucking pun i've heard <laughs> in a while it are is so sure good it's just are you sure it's just not air passing through though like, are I, you i'm, sure I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to get into that now but i would really like to but bonnie might get mad at me so back to poisonous starts Ooh. um so uh what the fuck you gonna clack his heels three times anyway i take a blast boo booby trap it's a cruise it's natural like a soybean burn the laser beam my vaccine i shoot it film it like you know it's it just flows so well it's got such a great fucking energy (coughs) and it's almost like this is this is his verse from the last song a little bit like kind of like flowing in but it was so hype Turns out he got his own extra track just for himself kind of like you guys left me out hold on no it's we can't even put Ghost next to the other guys because he's too good. You know, that's that's the opposite end of what it could have been. I don't know. Um, well, I really I really like the freaking whole thing. Um, anyway, I like when he's like, I'm so hyped. Jake's label, God, crack cocaine. <laughs> so he's so fucking hyped that the cops just call him crack cocaine. You know, it's fucking good stuff. Because he gets you hyper like cocaine. Anyway, four and a half on five. I really dug it. Good beat. Good fucking following up proper. Um, I got the sense that, you know, he's kind of having a good old time. Uh, on the second verse, he starts off with like, yo, yo, mountains of blow, like snow, constant cash flow, rocking a shaft, afro, rocking a shaft afro. Tony got mad glow with hose. Uh, only because Tony Stark is Iron Man, everyone. Right. In case anyone or was confused. Or isn't, isn't, um, what's, isn't Scarface's name, Tony? Yeah. I right. Wasn't sure. And then but, and then mountains of blow, and they're kind of living the Scarface high life. That, that and sounds, Tony Stark that of like Iron Man. I'm, I, is Tony. Stark. I'm gonna give you that, but I'm just saying Tony Stark doesn't do cocaine. The other Tony does. Well, Are you sure that Tony so, Stark doesn't do cocaine? The actor Listen, who plays my Tony Stark made do, do cocaine. New blow. That's it all is, I gotta it is say. It's illogical that Iron Man doesn't do cocaine off camera when the Disney people aren't looking. Robert Downey Jr. I'm not talking about Robert Downey Jr. I'm talking about <laughs> Tony Stark. Uh, okay. He's clean now, right? Um, so there is that line. I kind of got the sense that he's partying up. He's living rich. Uh, only built for Cuban links, kings who shoot dice, holding money bags, convertible bends with future with feathered bags. You know, he's got a lavish life. He's having his good old time. He's wilding out. He's he's uh, trying to be like Raekwon. He's trying to be like, I- I'm only built for Cuban links, <laughs> well, dude. Well, he was on that. Well, it was basically like a collaborative <laughs> yes, album. Yes, of course. Of course, the they, they all seem to kind of be like that. No, but like I think there was like two songs Ghost wasn't on on that album. You yeah, know? like I think True. Like, he was there. Um, I gave it a four on five. I feel like just ju- Wu Tang is just justifying why they're the best. Um, well, like Ghostface is justifying why Wu Tang is the best, and he's he's just kind of taken out there and got his own solo track to follow up the assassination day. It was great. Four on five. Yeah. Um. You know, we have more of like the kung fu movies again at the beginning to start off with. We've got a scene from that. Um, and he knows all the moves, and he kills the rhyme. I think it's just kind of like that. Um, I really liked uh, his flow on this one. It was really, really good. Um, there seems to be, like, a story that he's telling, but it seems less about, like, him telling us this story and more about, like, his intensity and, like, his, like, chance to kind of show off and, like, impress us with his, like, I mean, storytelling capabilities, but more with, like, his flow and his rap skills. Um, and again, this is only two minutes, 16 seconds. It's another kind of short and sweet one. Um, but it's really good. Um, I, I gave it a four on five. Winter wars. Fuck winter. I mean, it's no, hot. No, I can't wait for winter. It's, it's hot. Is it winter, winter yet? Door straight off the hinges. Master Avenger. I appear to blow your ear like wind. With a free 
I get the feeling that there was some sampling issue that has it grayed out or blacked out and can't be played on Spotify. So I don't know why that was. And uh, yeah, who wants to talk about Winter Wars? Um, yeah, so it's basically we've got uh, You God, Master Killer, Capitana, Raekwon. You know, we've got, you know, everybody here. Um, and Wu he's basically just saying, like, Wu-Tang is back with, like, these killer hits. Um, these rhymes are going to, like, blow your mind and nothing can stop them. They're just going to keep making hits and, like, they're just going to keep doing their thing, basically. They're raw and they're real. Um, my only, like, criticism of, like, all of these guys, um, I felt that Master Killer felt, felt kind of flat. Like, I felt like he kind of, like, pulled the, sound, the song down, down a little bit. Like, I don't know. Maybe he was just missing out. Mm. Um, but that's just me. Um, and, like, just kind of talking about, like, representing, like, you, you know, like, their hood in New York. I believe it was um, Park, Park Hill. I think that's where they're from. Um, so I kind of found this one a bit boring. Um, I'm not really, like, the biggest fan, like I get upset, of the woo. And so, like, you know, I appreciate their talent. And this was, like, you know, an okay song. But, like, it just wasn't my favorite. And, like I said, a bit boring. Um, I gave it a 3.75. And you, Chris? I felt like they were kind of battling each other. Like, in terms of Winter Wars, I felt like everybody was just kind of laying down their best verse uh, and trying to just, you know, one-up each other in, like, a friendly way, as well as kind of, like, promoting, you know, like, oh, we are, like, we got some really hot stuff for you for this winter. We're going to make sure we're going to cover Because it did you. come out um, October 29th, 1996, which I don't mm. think we said. Right. So, um, definitely, they're probably trying to take over the winter season, trying to be the hottest, you know, album or mixtape that's happening. Right. Uh, so, it was really cool, uh, but... I gave it a four. I didn't really it not like it. It was it was what a woo project I would say is. Everybody just comes in, slays their track, slays their verse, proves why they are who they are, and then you you get back into the flow of the album right after. For me personally, hmm. gave it a four. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't know what they're talking about. This was fucking <laughs> hype. I'm with you guys. First of all, Capadonna says his verse was a freestyle. I'm just off to, I'm just blowing away. Like, I don't see why he'd be lying, but right. there's a tweet of him going, yeah, my verse on this was a freestyle. I'm saying the CD Massacre murdered a cassette. Oh, that's cool. We're talking about, like, he destroys shit with his music in a <laughs> clever way. I blow the shop up. You ain't seen nothing yet. One man ran trying to get away from it. Put your bifocal on. Watch me. I cometh into your chamber like Freddy enter dream. Discombumberate. I've never heard that word in my life. It's so cool. I, I like those moments <laughs> when I learn new words. Um, your technique and your scheme, four course applause like a blackjack to dat. You're stuck on stupid like I'm stuck on the map. Oh, that last little that's bit a good there. Comparison. That's fucking hype, man. And if that's off the top, hats off, man. That is a fucking great verse. Or. Entertaining motherfuckers can't stop while I'm battling. You don't want to hear me start tattling all up in the stage because y'all snakes keep rattling. Bitch, you ain't got nothing on the ridge. I just, it sounds so good the way he says it. He's got the same kind of like intensity and like he's just got like this passion and this fucking awesomeness to the way he fucking flows. It's so well done. And it's off the top. Um, another fun one is when he goes, PLO style got thrown out the car and ran over by the Method Man Jeep. As I understand this, and this is what I love about the Wu-Tang. Like, they're not really afraid to go at each other if they want to, right? Because Capadonna, I don't know if he's in the Wu-Tang now, but he's definitely not in the Wu-Tang at this point, right? And I think that's relevant to this lyric because PLO style is that um, Method Man track off of Tikal. And, um, Tikal, Tikal, Tikal. And uh, basically, if you look at, from what I understand, Capadonna went to jail right before Wu popped. He gets out of jail and um all of a sudden method man is taken over as like the lead star of everything so he's he's gotten run over by the method man jeep and i thought that was really fucking cool and clever and really like interesting to like read about while i was listening to this track um i like you guys too like gum pow to the dome split the bone wig blowing off the ledge by the alleged full-fledged sledge rizza edge like i love it it's such good rhyming it's so much fun to listen to um, ghost faced he's just perfect you know like I like when he's like slick majestic broke mics are left infected gems start to spread through your crew like through uh, lack of effort 
That's fucking sick. He basically is like saying, y'all going to become shitty rhymers and shit because the bad attitude of lack of effort is going to spread around like a fucking toxic environment. It's good. It is well... Like foreshadowing what hip hop's going to be. <laughs> yep. It's so well written, man. I really like... I light up a little bit listening to this. And even like, say whatever about like... um Master Killer, he still got good lines like MC submit to your will as a kill your juvenile freestyle civilize the mental devils worship this like an icon. It's true. Us honkies up there, we love the Wu Tang. You still can't go a day in Montreal without a Wu Tang somebody somewhere. Somebody's wearing Wu. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm not talking about black folk. I'm talking about white people wearing Wu Tang clothing. And so he's right and um yeah, I, I think it's so interesting how self-aware they are. Bear-hugging mics with the grips of a python. That's um, apparently a line that uh, RZA gave him because at this time he didn't feel confident writing his own lyrics. So it's to imply that, like, I guess he's powerful on the mic even still. Hmm. And it's just crazy to think that they that he felt that way, you know. I don't know. It's so interesting to me. Uh, four and a half on five for this track. I really really liked it i liked raekwon on the hook i liked the whole feel of this track like it was a really good it was a really good like everybody doing their thing kind of song and what you would hope for you know yep well let's see if the woo will survive slash box in hand hey everybody it's fact time so for fact time, we're going to talk about why it, on Spotify on your CD it says Box in Hand and the track's actually called Woo Will Survive. And it's not that interesting. Uh, at the last minute, they scrapped uh, the actual box song and said, the Box nope, in Hand. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this Woo Will Survive instead. And then it was just too late to update the cover and the packaging. So it kind of got stuck with this uh, wrong name. But the song is actually Woo Will Survive. And Box in Hand is actually another song that just comes out later on. Yep. Crazy shit. Thank goodness the internet exists. I would have been so confused. See, if we were reviewing this back in, like, oh 1997, boy. you know, like maybe like after this had just come out or whatever, you know, and there was no Google back then, you know, it would have been a whole, whole other experience. That's true. And this one starts off with the singing about how Woo will survive and whatnot, and they make the party, whatever. And then uh, Raekwon's flow is like kind of, it feels off, but like off on purpose, off, like in a good way. And I fucking liked it. It made it really enjoyable to listen to his little verse. I thought it was cool. Um, and then Ghostface Killer comes in with shit like it's like Space Kid, the whole world is pitch black, a granola rap. Because his rap <laughs> is like granola, is good for you, like a granola bar. <laughs> but they're also dropping a lot of wisdom throughout their entire I'm, track. I'm not even dismissing that. Um, Doe got smaller, famous team walked up in photo mat. Now, from what I understood from the genius annotation, so I'm quoting that, is this is referencing a once big team who's now fucked on cash and has to go do some low-end robbing type shit. Uh, black down, numerous rounds, boots is down, getaway driver, this white bitch from out of town. We love the horse races, shaking jakes with high speed chases, porno stations, drinking violations, God the nations. 90 minute mix well tapes, instrumental breaks, bargain ear aches, lay my verse down at two takes. That's hot shit right there. That's one of my <laughs> favorite little parts on this album. Um, I think he just has this, like, you just get the sense that he's giving you the music of the people and then describing quickly the lifestyle that he's, like, living of the people to kind of get you up there. And then you just get this, like, picture of him popping this, like, beat tape from RZA into the car and he's just fucking rapping over it as he's driving and then walks in the studio and just lays it down on, like, two fucking takes and it's over, you know? Um, I like when Raekwon's, like, yo, he's strong arm him, manipulating, scraping taking play from hate and fake you hear me this whole things this whole shit's like wrestling what you dare me back the fuck up kid we flexing and i like that because there's so many parallels between hip-hop and wrestling when you actually think about it not like maybe what he's going for there but when you really take a step back and look at the scripted nature of wrestling but with the actual athleticism and talent that's required and maybe a comparable thing could be said about a lot of hip-hop i mean jay-z said so on that fucking uh what is that show, David Letterman? He kind of, Jay-Z was like, yeah, a lot of these guys are fake. I just won't say any names. And uh, I'm just saying, um, they're Method Man. Now, if y'all know me, you know I love his voice. 
I like Method Man. He can say anything. It's fucking cool. But <laughs> he just comes in, like, really strong. Like, this rap shit bust your gums and leave you stunned. Pull your plug. Now you can't function. There's no total sum to this equation. You frozen. Many can't may come, but few are chosen. And he's kind of, like, pointing out that this rapping life, this whole world that they're in, it's not really easy and shit. It's not, like, something just anyone can do. And a lot of people are really going to come on through and try their hand at this. But really... Only few are chosen or actually ever going to make it happen, you know? Anyway, it's fucking sick. Um, I like when he goes, From the Lamp, I grant three wishes. Uh, Johnny B. Parlayin, I blaze bridges. Then I roll 100% mind, 100% body, 100% soul, individuals. And then he goes, Asshole, tend to run. It's just so good. I love, A, the transition of this, like, spiritual mindfulness of everything. And he's, like, looking inside of himself and finding all the great shit. And then, Asshole, tend to run. It is like, that's funny. That's actually funny, the way he just flips it so quickly. Um, anyway, four and a half on five. I really like this song. Very enjoyable. Um, yeah, so, I mean, like, I don't know. It was all right for me. Like, I found the beat was very familiar, and I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was. Um, you know, I just kind of hit them talking about, like, everyone is involved in their business, but they like to do, like, whatever illegal things that they want to do, or they want to do, you know, they just want to, like, be left alone, you know? Um, you know, they're minding their own their own business and they want you to mind <coughs> your own and that's basically it. Um I gave it a three point five out of five. It was alright. It wasn't it didn't stand out or anything for me. Um, I kinda feel the same way. I like uh I like uh Method Man showing up. That was a different, refreshing voice compared to what we've been hearing so far. Um and they all kinda stand up uh stand up to each other again. Holden quoted basically every line <laughs> I wanted. Um, but, like, you can't discredit that these guys have spent time to to write the proper bars and write the use the proper words to okay. to make you go back and think and think about what, they, what they're trying to say. I left it at a four. Perfect. Um, it's so hot and sweaty, it might, it might even end up being fish, fish. Smack horns, we like batons. Most my niggas smoke like Hillshire phones. Check the gummy so Um, Bonnie, how do you feel about fish? Um, I don't. I don't like. I don't like eating fish. Me neither. Do you like uh, eating fish? I enjoy eating fish, salmon, uh, and all that. But I didn't like this song actually. Oh. Um, I it's. I gave it a three point five because I didn't really feel anything for it. It kind of just played and played again and play it again and i just i didn't get into it there wasn't that hype to it there wasn't this like type of uh finesse or flair to it that really like got me captivated to want to listen again and really care um one thing i did like was uh ghostface when he was like turn my ch uh, turn on my channel uh it'll blow your your whole bench uh off the panel off the panel like 80 roman candles that ba uh, that backfired and slammed you I like that. that. That was a nice little imagery. Somebody fucked up with uh, firecrackers. It was just a cool little picture to think. But either than that, I don't. I don't know. This song was just very meh. This is what it is. Track nine, and I was like, oh, okay, three point five. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay, Bunny. Um, there was. There, it sounded kind of like a drug documentary, you know, at first, um, and about them being gangsters and like the Italian mafia once was. Like they're kind of like, you know, kind of wishing that they had like that same sort of like. Like, what is that? Like, I don't know, richness. I don't know, something, power. I don't know what it, ex it is exactly that they had. Um, but they're going to rule everything, and they're going to distribute drugs, it seems. Um, but it could also be that their drugs are, like, their songs, and then, like, people need them. Like, they need a drug, I'm guessing. Um, and also in, in kind of involved in, like, crimes that pay. So, like, you know, they're, they're doing bad things, but they're making money off of it. Um, so for me, there was nothing really new on this song. I also gave it a 3.5 on 5. It was kind of meh as well. I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so, like, I really, I thought a little bit about the mafia thing. If I understand and I remember anything, the Italian mafia hates black people back in the day. It was super racist shit happened or whatever. And used crack or pushed drugs towards the black communities because they felt it was super destructive. They felt it was a really bad force, and so they made it to be, like, a black thing, you know? And so at least I took it kind of from that, you know? Hmm, that's interesting. Based off of what was specifically said, because that is, like, a mafiosa-type guy. 
describing how they do all the crimes but the drugs. And then if you think about what we've encountered from these guys, all it is is the drugs. And most of them were robbing or whatever, but there's a lot of the drugs involved. So, I mean, yeah, I really like this song. I, it's It's the way they word things in rhyme. Like, to me, it's not like – it's not necessarily about – the raw content of the song having this theme to it you know it's just raw poetry of well-placed words put together like we eat fish toss salads and make rap ballads so fish could be the people who are new to prison or rookies or little fucking newbies in the rap game so they take them out they're nasty so Not they fish. eat assholes like that nigerian girl said in that rap video i saw recently <laughs> Um, and then they make rap ballads, which is true. So they just live, they wild out. They say so much, so much you said in what? Eight words? I'm Could just, also be fish scale. I don't know about that. I mean, maybe you're right, but it could be. It, it also could just be a bunch of stuff, but he also said fish and not fish scale, you know? Um, the biochemical slang lord will throw the Arabs in the dope fiend vocal cord switch laser beams. And, you know, you get the sense that, again, that, like, he's he's the, apparently the biochemical slang lord. I don't really get that part. But I love the idea of his voice and flow switching up, in a sense, to basically do what's needed to be done in the same way that they would deal with, you know, the Arabs in a drug situation, you know. My triple sevens broke the slot machines out in Queens, which is apparently in, in Vegas or something. And then I love whenever Grey Poupon is mentioned. I never liked Grey Poupon. <laughs> But it's nice to hear that it gets brought up. I saw a great video describing how it's used as like a, a wealth point in rap. Like you're just rich enough to have Grey Poupon. Or, you know, the part that or Chris Wayne's mentioned World. is cool. But I like I really like where he's like, every day is like a video shoot. Check this shit. I take it back to play by stash guns and whips, picture Afro picks, shish kebabs and dashikis. So there it's like we have all this black root culture stuff that was like from the protest, the civil movement and stuff mixed with this like almost darker side where like they're almost like living out this rap video life all the time. And thousand civil march raised their fist in early 60s like it's it's cool to show that he's like giving that awareness to the situation so much got said there it was one of my favorite ghost face verses on the album capadonna i don't know his was okay i liked when it was like destination be the cash one i step past one don't make me blast one i'm cool like eskimo flow kappa villain stay chilling because he can just say that, and it's cool. So take shots of penicillin, clean out the steam out. She fiend to uh, blow out, but I'm equipped with my white. You know, same kind of whatever. It wasn't the best verse, but I like the way he came into it. I just really like that Eskimo line because I know it's not a word I'm supposed to say, but I feel like whatever. It was a good line. You know, it just made <laughs> me picture Canada. Um, and then Raekwon. Raekwon just comes from the realest shit because Raekwon is almost contextualizing some shit, you know? Like, yeah. now where I come from, cats be carrying, uh, marrying drug money, fuck up your wife, get four to life, cream we handling, midtown scrambling, move and examine the fly shit, plus get uh, quick to buy shit, chef, yeah, you know the whole gods, uh, Astro, Fidel Castro suits plus depositing cash roll, big time play it like where? Canadian wine. Um I love that part. So he really describes the entirety of maybe hip hop or his entire lifestyle and culture in literally like five lines in a way that you haven't. I mean, parts of it you've heard before, like cream we handling. Yeah. But Fidel Castro suits depositing cash rule. So that's like like if you think about Fidel Castro's anti-capitalist stance and his like almost militaristic khakis and whatnot out there. It's just what a way to describe it you know or the fact is like you know you 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 mess with your girl you go to jail or shit like that like these things happen i don't know i love the last line fetus style blocking goals like hockey that is the weirdest lyric to me right (laughs) like it is just out there you know um fetus style i guess is something new something just crazy and fucking different it's just shocking and then he's blocking goals like hockey i don't I don't know. That's a strange one to me. I gave this on a four and a half on five. I fucking like this shit. I don't know. <laughs> this doesn't get boring to me. Like, the more I listen to this album, I found myself in some cases just replaying a song. I wasn't focusing on the lyrics. I was just vibing on how they rhyme. Like, how they rhyme is just so fucking good. Anyway, this one's for Bonnie and all the other ladies out there. Come here. Is you with me? Is you waiting? Sweet ass carrot cake bacon. Plus, you don't eat turkey bacon. I don't. Are you guys going to be Debbie Downers on this song? It's a very nice song about each individual artist expressing how they are going to romanticize and indulge in nice times with a particular woman. 
Um, Capadonna is on some sort of vibe, uh, as I'm seeing here. He's on some sort of vibe and on some path to have a great time and wants to t and meets and ends up seeing this beautiful woman. Uh, wants to take her out, bring her on a date, and then kind of just show her like what being treated real is and how how you should treat a woman. Uh, and that is kind of like the premise of both the other verses as well, just done by Ghostface and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Raekwon. Um, <clears throat> Raekwon is getting tipsy, drinking, hoping that the, the woman or the women that he is currently with are getting the hints that he's getting horny and he wants to start fucking and have a good old night and kind of escalate through the night. And then, um, as well, Ghostface kind of follows suit and does his version of what he would do to romanticize a woman and treat her right. Um, what I like, though, is at the end of the song, you get the kind of like, because uh, you have the hook where it's like, love somebody, love love something, love says goodbye or something like that. But at the end of it, at the end of the track, they loop that and let it play out a little bit. And you kind of get this sense of like, uh, I've become a fool again for falling in love. And you're kind of understanding like there there might be this conscientious, this uh, not, not decision, but like this subconscious thought of, wow, I'm falling in love. I don't want to feel trapped. I don't want to feel like I'm going to get myself hurt or, or something like that. That's what I took away from it. I got a four on five. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, he's kind of, like, talking to, like, a lady, I think, that at the beginning um, that he finds interesting. Um, and then I, I think that these girls that, like, they're kind of getting involved with are sort of gold diggers or, like, they're kind of, like, after them for, like, not necessarily, like, their money, but, like, for nice things and, like, to be treated nicely. And um, I think also, you know, like, they like that they're powerful and whatever, you know, that they can do all these, you know, things in the hood or whatever. Um, and then Kame is like some sort of like sexy lady soap. I don't, I didn't really know. I didn't really quite get it. Um, which I thought was kind of a weird, weird song, uh, or a weird thing to name your song after, I guess. Um, so it's all these kind of sexy girls that are like throwing themselves at them. Um, and it's easy to like work them and like to, to, to get these girls, um, uh, you know, because, you know, they're kind of, like, bawling and famous, I think. Like, I, I don't know. I wasn't really, like, understanding this one. I found it kind of creepy and weird. It wasn't my favorite one. Um, I gave it a three on five. I, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Okay. Uh, so they basically realized that women show up to their shows and wrote a ladies' jam. So this is each of them laying their Mac down on you. Like, they're, they're isolated stories from each other, as far as I can tell. It's almost okay. as if... Each of these guys is showing you what would happen if, and it plays out in the same way. Hot girl walks in, Raekwon slash whoever's at the table, and now they're talking to the girl, inviting them to have a conversation, and then they each tell a version of how it goes down. Like, Raekwon's is more of the gold digger one. So it's some woman who makes it abundantly clear that um and it's okay like lipstick crayon and flat fahrenheit spray on i'm getting tipsy i hope she read cox like uh, a gypsy i love that line it's fucking great and transporting bricks stealing many 50s fuck negotiating is you with me so he gets horny here he gets frustrated he's like you know what balls to the balls just do it man you we gonna fuck is, is that what's gonna happen here i don't have patience for this shit no more and then um you know, uh, immediately after that, she's like, sweet ass carrot cake, vegan, plus you don't eat turkey ba uh, bacon. And then he's kind of questioning, like, her other, like, characteristics, right? Because he's a 5%er and he's Muslim and all this. He doesn't eat pork and she does and, you know, it's shit like that, right? Like, And then she responds to him with, I don't get down like that. Uh, I don't get down neither, is what he said. Uh, Cuban links skeezer, why are you acting like a rap teaser? So he's kind of, like, pulls it back a bit. He's like, okay, well, like, I was just joking, whatever. Why are you being like that? You know, whatever. And then she basically, like... Um, I'm like the Julia Exchange plus a range. You small change. I only fuck for Figaro chains. So she is a gold digger. And then he looks her down and gets his thing. Then Capadonna's verse is just like a completely different universe. It is uh, a surprising thing happens in Capadonna's verse. So he invites the girl over. Um, he And then he, you know, is doing the same kind of nice sweet talk at the beginning. But then he goes, I order me a sex on the beach with a cherry. I order her whatever that is on ice. Sounds nice. Uh, she elegant, pretty eyes, glasses, intelligent, whispered in my ear that she's celibate, meaning she doesn't have sex, everyone. 
whisper back to her here, we don't even have to go there. As I grab her hand and set her politely in the chair, as we stop to stare at one another, you know, and then he goes on and he's just like, you know what? You don't want to have sex? That's fine. Let's be romantic and, and like, I'll hold your hand and we'll talk instead. Mm. I've never heard that in a rap verse before. Like, I, or I might have, but never so overtly, like, I will offer you my full consent or whatever. I will respect your consent, you know? Like, that was definitely, like, even if it is the the shallow version that Chris put forth, I still think it's really a noteworthy thing that I've never heard before in all of these songs we've done, you know? Hmm. And then Ghostface has fucking game, everybody, you know? <laughs> What's happening, Brown Sugar? Say, you look so good today. Ankle bracelet wrapped around your leg. I mean, the way he spits it, you just feel it, you know? You're just like, damn, Ghostface is not full of shit, you know? Um, and then he just kind of like, you know, the drinks are on me, this, that, the next thing. But then he just fucking loses his shit and he's like, Girl, you a sexy motherfucker. Damn, what's the recipe? You make a wanna goddamn. And then he, because he said recipe, he got hungry and goes, can you cook, darling? <laughs> Fucking amazing. That is some mic dropping shit right there. <laughs> but like really, if you're thinking about this from the perspective, right? They're writing it so that you as the lady fan are going to hear the macking on you. And then Ghostface just exploding while you're sitting there like he just wants you that bad. It's pretty fucking clever. This is a five, man. This is an. This is how you do a ladies' jam, in my opinion. Like this is well done. If you really look at it from the context of each of these guys is just spitting game to you through the mic, so that when you're at the live show, they can look you in the eye and shit. They wanted their version of Ice Cream by Method Man. Apparently, <laughs> I liked it. It was fucking great. Daytona 500 is the next song. All right. A limo and jet to the fly state for late take a break break down the eighth and then wait drop it like i just can't have you guys being like no this is the same song all over again this is fire this is so fucking good man i'm just putting it out now that beat that introduction bit oh that like, that beat is that beat not hype chris you know i feel those pumping hype. bumps that beat is hype. does not make you just want to fucking go in makes me want to fucking go in <laughs> and that's fucking what, bounce and fucking do it and that's what i feel like each of these mcs did on this one man is you got that like that little i i can't remember what they're interpolating but if i'm not mistaken they're interpolating somebody's song like famous like a michael jackson type person song and the way they sing it right and throw in some woo lyrics there i think it's make, a jackson five song i think and um uh, oh at the beginning yeah 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 it's a jackson five song right see i was close um and then man just say peace to cats who rock mac knowledge knowledge is street astrava just light up the mic uh, acknowledge this fly joints that carry two points corolla motorola holder play a guide pack over the shoulder chrome tanks player like yanks check the franchise it's fucking proper again just comes in like he like I don't feel like we've seen a lot of this level of aggression, like this straight up, like we're going to fucking destroy you on this. We have seen some story time from them, but not necessarily so much like this level. Like I think it's Raekwon here and um, I feel like he just, this was his strongest verse on this project. Like he just came in and he did it amazing and it blew me out the fucking water, you know, repel all fakes like reflectors. Great line. Um, Thugs, they be booing and screwing. We canoeing, uh, claim they doing the same shit we do in fuck a union. And then I looked and realized that not as many songs actually have swearing. I skimmed through the lyrics, and this is one of the few that really does have a fuck in there. And a few do, but it's it's surprising how little actual swearing you know is on this album. Right. Um, Ghostface does the next verse, doing forever shit like uh, voice be mellow, like Von Happer, Radio Barber, Murder, Sleepaway Camp, The Fly Lady, Champ the Argonist, who burn with his pen regardless, staying all these earthlings and fake foreigners. I don't know what the hell he's talking about exactly. It seems like a little bit reference heavy, but, you know, it feels like they're consistently doing this stuff like, you know, when they would jump the turnpikes to get into Metro for free or rob people, you know, back in the day type stuff, etc. And then, you know, I don't really have anything to go with that. I just like the fuck what he said there. Sorry, it's fucking hot in here. It's harder to think than normal. Uh, <laughs> True identity, hidden inside secret tabloids, breathe oxygen, both sides of my jaw carry oxes. The track hit like the bangers in 100 watt boxes. Like, it's fucking dope there, you know? Like, the, just the idea of somebody's identity hidden inside secret tabloids, like to figure out. And then if you think about it, what he's, what I take from that is he's like, 
his lyrics are coded in the way of like true messages hidden inside the tabloid so when you look at his rhymes it looks a certain way but once you really get into it you know it breaks it down into something more and then anyway it follows up from there and then yeah kappa comes in and does this thing proper i like i like his flow like he comes in with this really cool slightly different flow lyrically it's fine i don't have a lot more i do like when he's like smuggle balloons lorna dunes and fat pussy wounds that was a really great lyric to me. I don't know. There's something about it. It almost made me giggle when I heard it just because it came in. Um, five on five. This track is fucking hard. It, it hits the right way. I really enjoyed it. That beat kind of threw me off a little bit, though. It is. Uh, like, it's, it's a hype beat. I know, and I know I hyped it up at the beginning, but it did. It was a little bit, like, wonky uh, <laughs> in terms of, like, just from the sounds we were getting. Uh, either than that, I think that, uh, again, I don't really have much to say about this song either. I feel like they were, they came in, they slayed the track, they were flexing, uh, letting us know, like, you know, how they do and how they move in their each individual ways. I left it at a four. Yeah, um, so this is, you know, Daytona 500, which is like, you know, a, I think a motorcycle race usually, if I'm not mistaken, that happens in Florida, in like Daytona, Florida. Um, I think it's just motorcycles. I don't know. Let me know if there's anything else that's involved. Maybe there's cars as well. Um, anyways, so like I'm guessing that they are saying that they've won this race or whatever. They're the champions. Um, I really liked the, the, the freestyling at the beginning. It was very nice. Um, the scratching was cool. I enjoyed that. Um, you know, and there are gangsters that light up the stage and the mic. Um, and, you know, and they're good. And like, but they're, they're who they are. They're still like tough guys from the hood. Um, and they make killer rhymes, and they make a lot of money. And yeah, I mean that's basically like the gist of this one. Um, I really did like the composition. I did, and I really like the sound of this one as well. I gave it a four on five. Okay, uh, Motherless Child is the next track. All right. Do one thing. It's very important to stay hydrated in this kind of humidity. Absolutely. All right, Chris, how did you feel about Motherless Child? Did you did you get like a fucked up feeling at one point like I did? I just just I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> okay. Well, motherless child uh, is about, from what I understand, Raekwon and um, Raekwon seems to be some addressing some deaths uh, that have been happening in the hood or that are, that are going around in the environment, trying to make light of like, you know, violence is getting out of control. We have to figure something out. We have to do this. Uh, we've got like drug wars. We've got drought wars happening. Um, personally, I feel like Raekwon's voice is a little bit lower than the instrumental. Um, so that was a little bit like, I couldn't really hear him clearly. Uh, but then we go on to Ghostface and, if I'm not mistaken, there's this whole story about how Ghostface basically wanted a necklace off of some kid or some dude and builds up this creative story about how he ends up getting the necklace. Uh, well, and well, before that, um, the guy is like a rich guy who hangs out with gangsters and flosses and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then awesome. pulled a gun on Ghostface and his friends at the UA, which is, I guess, a movie theater thing. And then they see the guy and, and he has his new necklace and proceed to rob him and then kill him. And then the grandmother shoots his friend in the yeah. ass. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that kind of that shifted me a little bit because I was just like, not only are you like the, the extent of the robbery ended up in violence, blood or whatever, but it's so bad in that area that grandmothers are walking around with shotguns that anything could happen. You have to protect your life. You have to protect yourself. And it was just really like just the way Ghostface described it and broke it down. You could really like I really felt like like I was there. Like I could see what's happening. I could I could get into it. Like, He's getting it now. He was he was, finally like, he he knows how to tell a story. Uh, overall, I left this song at a 4.5. It really sits you, it really leaves you off with something to think about. Like, I value where I live, to tell you the truth now. And uh, you, Miss Bunny? Um, well, I mean, it kind of is what it is, right? It's a motherless child. Obviously, we're going to hear a story of a kid that doesn't have a mom. Um, or doesn't have a mother around, maybe. Um, so, like, this kid starts, like, shooting shooting up, and then, like, it's like, kind of talking about, like, a sad world and that people are doing whatever they can to survive, basically. Like, that's kind of, like, the gist of it. Um, and, like, he shouts out his friends in jail as well, you know, which is nice. You know, it's sort of a more 
more like connecting with people, I guess. Um, I really enjoyed the, the flow and like the feeling of this one. It felt like more real about something a little bit different from like some of the other songs, like a bit more like honest and being like, this is what's going on. And people are just doing whatever they can to survive. And like, you know, and they end up in jail for doing these things. But, you know, it just they just can't get out of the situation. So I gave it a, a four on five. Yeah. Um, the only thing, this one had the outro where he was kind of doing all the shout outs and whatnot, right? Yeah. I, was, I know it's cool, and I respect why he did it. I didn't like that. But that's the only thing I didn't like. This song is otherwise fucking flawless. Like, Raekwon is a contact setter here. He's like the prelude to a book, the foreword, the stuff that's written by the other guy that hypes up the book before you start reading the book, and then you get into the intro from the... Anyway, books are weird like that. There's lots of little <laughs> chunks that aren't part of the page count. Um, <clears throat> then you have uh, Raekwon. Just think about what he's saying here. Rich man, poor man, read the headlines. Okay, everybody is reading the news and seeing what's being said here, right? Everybody are getting murdered for spots and bigger uh, dimes, droughts and drug wars, living by gum law. So this is all the stuff that people are reading on the, the newspaper headlines and how they're all perceiving a situation. Jailcats come home and want to take yours. As a young one, growing up broke, me and my peoples had to sell coke. I guess we all in the same boat. Think it, plus drinking that 90 proof, playing the roof, saying we need an X man to shoot. So you have a bunch of desperate people getting drunk up on the rooftop, considering a situation and how to handle it, coming to the conclusion of we gotta go and cop a motherfucker. And um, then Ghostface tells this elaborate story that we've just had described and whatnot. And uh, I mean, y'all know the rhyming is going to be proper and it's fucking hot. So I'm not going to go through as many lyrics there. But <laughs> the story goes through and it's fucking it is exactly like crazy. It really is like you're not really expecting grandma to come out with a shoddy at the end to try and protect your dying son or whatever. But what's also no, like, even is it are they even related? No, to I think that yeah, because they went to the guy's you? house and then his grandma came out after they killed him. Oh. But they killed him in a way to make sure that blood didn't get on his necklace so that it would not lose any value. Anyway, it was really well done. It was crafted beautifully. Four and a half on five. Let's uh, talk about Black Jesus. Pay. Yeah. All right, so how do you feel about this, Bunny? Um, so this one is actually interesting. Um, you know, Black Jesus, we're getting like him kind of like preaching a little bit, I think, towards us. Um, and it's a nice and positive message about like knowing your true self and like finding your creation and like doing whatever you got to do. Um, and sounds kind of like Native American chanting going on in the background, which I love like listening to. I think that it's always like a really powerful thing when, you know, they do that. Um, you know, it's, you know, and like I said, this one sounds powerful and I think it might also be because of that as well. Um, so he's kind of breaking uh, myths and stories um, and like biblical stories. He's kind of like breaking them down and like changing them and like kind of, you know, telling you kind of the other side of the story a little bit. Like he's doing, you know, he's looking at things a little bit differently. Um, <clears throat> and then it's just like, you know, killer raps. I mean, overall, I mean, it's just it's just great. Um, it was unique sounding and like the sound of this one. Um, really, really like drew me in, and I think it, you know, it draws everyone in a little bit. Um, so I give it a four point two five. I didn't. Re I don't think I really understood this track. My problem with it is that I feel. I understand that they're trying to bring about this like self acknowledging and and like being the creator of your own. That's kind of part of the sample inter interlude, the interlude that they're having at the beginning of the song. But I don't really quite get the actual crux of the track. Uh, but I do love the different verses and the styles that are presented on this song. The sound itself has this kind of like, um, not like this eerie beat, but like this kind of grim beat to it. That's like that's that's keeping you kind of like in this in this state of where they're trying to get you to to acknowledge like how how they've been making movements or whatnot. Uh, but overall, I mean, I gave it a four. It was just. I don't know. I just didn't didn't quite get it. That's fair. Um, from what I understand from the intro, I think it's Papa Wu is kind of explaining to Ghostface Killer some of the five percenter stuff. Mm -hmm. He's um, from what I looked up to be the leader of like the the five percenter knowledge. Like he's the guy that you put on when you need to explain something. <clears throat> and so he is talking about this perception of how like everything you are the creator of yourself and he kind of goes into the beliefs and then the beat kicks in and they just kind of um you know go through their different perspectives on this i think like with it, uh raekwon's on the um 
I like when he's like, for real, marinating, talking, debating, waiting, style, flowing, relating, fine lines, switch it on you like Venetian blinds. Like, it just so fucking flows proper. The mission is mine. Fabulous king, I divine. <laughs> you know, I think it's a matter of either visualizing the things they want out of their lives because the reality is... Um, that's kind of what the the beginning part is, is we're all made up of everything and everything is kind of made up within ourselves. So in a sense, if you find it within yourself, you can kind of create it in real life, you know? Right. So they're just kind of putting it out there and, and just kind of commenting. Um, I like how Ghostface is like these mics is like the Golden Gloves versus Spark Plug. It's like the pen in seminars that play off. Start the J like Cochrane got OJ off. Start the J off like Cochrane got OJ off. I really like that line. That was fucking solid. Like, and it's like of the times. Yeah, so like you know J off like jacking off or whatever, but also a jack like you know I took it more like in like a, you know like a sly way of like he's gonna deal with situations and in the same way he gets off in the same way that OJ. It was so fucking well done. Y'all got the line. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it was pretty fucking solid. The specialist who eyeballed your mistress's necklace, perpetuous, the curly her kids treacherous, let the egg go so we can dip, dip, dive like Lego. I don't know, man. It's fucking got this flow. The rock, the rock that, then rock that fisherman's hat like Gorton's. I forgot that people like the bucket hats back in the day. I have a buddy of mine who rocks it to this day. That's some real shit. Bonnie's knows him. He wears the bucket hat. <laughs> yep. And then uh, you God comes in and just takes it to a whole other place with it, right? With like, I hold down the place, no shots to the face, to leave for us, no religious style faith. That's always interesting to me because I've always felt like within myself, I don't really adhere so much to religion in the way that I maintain faith. So I really like that line. And then he's kind of differentiating from the way people are kind of branded into following the rules of a given religion or another. The melting pot, boil, gunshot, drama, soil, gamble when I scramble, handle pots of oil. It's fucking solid stuff. He goes on through. I like when he's like, you're hit by my element, Great Wall of China. It was fucking fun. I don't know why. I just really like the line. It just seems so out of nowhere. <laughs> the song, just the whole energy, even the, the little introduction bit, it all sounds like something you just want to listen to because it makes you feel uplifted and like powerful, like you can achieve some shit. So it's a five. It's a fucking great song to me. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, the next one is uh, when the smoke clears. After the smoke is clear. Oh, uh, whatever. I don't know. It's it's cool how they how like again their rhyming is tight. That everything they do is super great. Uh, but I feel like they're just they're kind of like just representing that they're going to be on top when the smoke clears. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I like when Rizzo was like unprivileged, grew up in a in a st Stapleton house village where blood flood the watery streets like oil spillage. Again, more of this dark grim, uh, like this dark grim scenery about the environment and where they're where they're from. Uh, but I, I think it's to also kind of like dig into the message of like they've been through so much shit that once the smoke clears if you're gonna go up against them battle them or whatever happens they will still be on top they they know how they are they're strategic they know how to move they know how to be doing what they have to do to uh succeed and you know stay alive uh either than that i liked uh delphonics uh i liked how they um how they 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 did the the chorus or the hook if you want to consider it that that was good uh, overall, I left it out of four. Cool. Um, I think, like, you know, in, like, they, like, you know, they were talking about, like, all this kind of crap that was going on in the hood and the way things are and, like, you know, but I think a lot of it was kind of um, criticizing the government and the powers that be. Like, they were kind of like, you know, you guys need to, like, help us. Like, you know, again, like, we've heard this, I think, you know, time and time again, whenever they talk about, like, the struggles in, like, you know, these, like, areas in the States, you know, or wherever, um, you know, there are, they're saying that the government, the government needs to, like, get more involved and, like, help us and, like, help, you know, fix things up. Um, and he kind of talks about, like, L. Ron Hubbard and about, like, Scientology. So I'm not sure, like, maybe, like, that has, like, something to do with, like, the 5% thing. Like, you know, they're both kind of, like, weird um, religion things. Well, the line's <laughs> like, I snap your shoulder blade in half, laugh and pop shit. Reader's Digest passed my book to L. Ron Hubbard if I got back to where the government tried to dub it. So I think it's trying to, like, imply that he, like, wrote out some truth or whatever. And then he was being, like... Reader's Digest branded him as science fiction and crazy in the same way. That Hubbard and the Scientologists are. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm like so overall, like I wasn't really sure like what the whole like 
main point of the song was about. Um, it was. It sounded a little bit weird, but it was an interesting kind of weird. I didn't mind it. It was. It was unique. Um, I gave it a three point five on five. Yeah. Um, so this is the first one I really didn't like as much. Um, and it was partly the hook. I didn't really like the hook, the Delphonics thing. It was kind of cool. It was kind of whatever. But after a while, I just felt it kind of annoying. Um, the rhymes are all right. Ghostface comes in, you know, yo, God, show these how we get deep down and dirty. Like k got his wig pushed back for five birdies, which is drugs. I learned in the comment section today because Bonnie brought it up in a lyrical breakdown and somebody answered this morning. <laughs> Yo, they got a hit hit placed on my head. What should God do? Max out in Spain and do business with the Jews. Now that's an int- And then he's like, never that. Don't you know? He doesn't do that. But that's interesting because he's referencing the way the Jews got like fucking pushed out of Spain and like almost a genocidal type way back in the 1400s. That's fucking interesting, you know? Like, like that's when you're dropping lines that require google like that i have to give it credit like they're well thought out and they're they're just they're interesting and if i if i sat with this album for like a year or two and came back and reviewed it i still wouldn't know what every line meant and that's fucking worth stating here um then uh raekwon i like when he's just like the greatest story ever told by me precisely roman numeral f- uh iv plus three describe me so what he's saying is seven is the number of god of himself he's calling himself a god as they do and and in like a really creative way and i think that that line is a great description of what the wu-tang folk do well in terms of or at least raekwon in particular finding new ways to say exactly the same fucking thing that's cool. And um, then um, Rizza is on here, and as I expressed earlier in this review, he's definitely not my favorite Wu. He might be my least favorite Wu in terms of vocal delivery. He's fine in terms of what he says, though. Like, others live to be wise and old, like Desmond, Tulo, undisputed champion, belt holder, shaped to mold us, sole controller of the lunar, solar of the polar. I blow hash smoke through my nasal, my brain worth 30 billion. I kind of like that. He's kind of talking about his like tenure as as a uh, ability to keep it going and what he's doing. He's kind of got this eternal legacy to it, and really, as he exhales his hash smoke, as you do, um, he, we find out his brain, his creativity is just worth. It's that golden. It's worth thirty billion dollars. His confidence in how he sees himself, and you know what? I really like that. It's pretty cool. But I don't know that I like this song as much as the others. I recognize it as a good song, but I can't say I really enjoy this song. So I give it a four on five. All right. Well, all that I got is you. Cool. Eat grits because we was poor. Grab the flies for the channel. Fix the hanger on the TV. Rock and eat. So in the music video, uh, Ghostface Killer is playing piano in a street in the hood. And, like, stuff happens around him while he sings the song. And then it switches over to, um, what's her name? Mary. Mary And she has the kid and stuff. And it was uh, the only video I could find for this album. So I watched it. I made that little effort because I feel like I've been negligent lately. Um, And, yeah, this uh, has another scene from the education of Sonny Carson playing where he's in jail. And I think it's when he's meeting the gangster friend that inducts him into the gang. And the kid's like, you're 13. Shouldn't you just be be at home with your mama and stuff, you know? Like, And then Ghost comes in. And then he just spits you, like, this raw, this fucking tale of where he comes from. Where, like, you listen to everything he's ever said and you're like, Ghost, man, if you had to pick the cockroaches out of your Fruit Loops and shit... Like, all those kids packed into a fucking apartment and stuff. Like, the really poor situation. His dad leaves him when he's six. You know, it, it's really, it's rough, you know? And then he just kind of has this, like, appreciation. Uh, like, can he just express this, this, like, empathy towards his mother's situation throughout this honest and, like, kind of almost feel his heart breaking as he's, as he's t- saying these lines and telling this story. But then, it does word up, mommy, I love you. Word up, it was all you, you brought me in like that. And then Mary does her part, and it was just kind of continuing the story a bit, and it was fine. It was okay. I uh, appreciate how well she fits the song and stuff, but it, it's just not my favorite sound. But I thought it was nice. I thought it, it was, was very nice and pleasant, but like I kind of just powerful. let it, it feels like instrumental when she sings. Because her voice is an instrument. I agree. But as far as what she said goes, I wasn't focusing as much on what she said. I was more caught up in his part. It wasn't anything too, uh, like, spectacular. It kind of just... It's I a feel five. like Mary J. Blige's verse was um, 
was kind of like giving you the in-depth feel of how Ghostface is feeling after he just unraveled his entire yeah. story. Uh, I feel like, because she mentions like she's kind of sitting down on the side, she's thinking back to stuff, she's, she's got like X, Y, Z. So I feel like she's playing this role of just like the softer, calmer side of like, out of all of this pain and agony and suffering and blah, 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 you've got this like, this is kind of where I'm at right now. Like, this is just my broken side where I'm at. Um, is the mother... Did, like, like at this time, did the mother die or something? Because there was a line where he goes, like, Mama was strong, but she still... It, maybe not strong enough, she still went down. Well, because he was talking about the fact that the grandmother had to kind of hold down the family unit and during this, like portion right. of heartbreak at least that's how i interpreted that part like right. during this portion of heartbreak your mother wasn't strong enough to hold down the situation on her own she was breaking down like she wasn't okay strong. So, okay so that's what it was i thought i thought he i thought he was saying like you know my mom ended up dying like she was super strong yeah, but i, they, guess I think that's like, like I, I saw a picture of them i might be wrong but um I, yeah, I took it more like this was him making the conscious effort to write her a song. You know, that she, she'd hear it. Absolutely, she'd... absolutely. Uh, overall, I gave the song a five. I think it's it's beautifully produced. It's crafted amazingly. It doesn't even, it's, it's like, what, five minutes? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. even feel like five minutes, though. I wouldn't go like, that far. Per, really? <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I'm not saying I hated the five minutes, but the, the end part is a lot of Mary and outro, and it's about 90 okay. seconds of that. Okay. I and, guess I guess because um, you don't like the sound of it or whatever. I'm not the biggest. I recognize the quality of it and why it deserves to be a five, so I guess that five, fine. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to love it as much as everyone else does while appreciating why it is so significant to see it this guy do such a thing at such a time like it's it's not even that common to see people do it today you know fair enough five on five yeah um so like this one like stood out to me right away like i was like running errands and i had like the you know uh, the first time i was listening to this album i just you know because you know out and about doing whatever and i heard this song and i was like oh my gosh what is this and like i have to like remember to like you know remember this song and it was obviously because of mary like you know mary j blige has just a beautiful voice um you know like you said there's another clip from uh the education of sonny carson you know and the guy's kind of talking to him like like he's too young he's kind of astonished by the fact that he's like in jail and he's so young um and he talks about you know his tough life growing up and you know mary sings about that that she's thankful for you know help making it through um, he's proud of, of being a dad and having a family. He's, you know, he's living well. He's, you know, able to provide for his children. Um, and I think that's pretty important for him. Um, kind of talks about how poor they were and that the father left um, and that he ended up living with his grandmother. Um, and the house was like, you know, basically cockroach, like riddled and, you know, just was pretty gross. And they couldn't afford like the basic necessities like toilet paper and things like that. Um, and he's almost in disbelief at this point that he's made it and he's kind of questions whether he deserves like the success that he has, you know, and then he talks, you know, he talks about like, you know, his mom and like, he's very sweet and you're like, no, he loves his mommy and, um, you know, how he, you know, maybe his mom like helped him to like achieve like, like the success that he has now or like, you know, gave him inspiration or like just kept like, you know, motivating him. Um, and yeah, and I think that like. Um, I think that his father got involved with drugs, if I'm not mistaken, he says, or somebody got involved with drugs. Um, well, and the father left at six years old. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was because of the drugs. And, um, you know, then we have Papa Wu again that comes in at the end, kind of like spouting his like 5%, you know, spiel or teachings or whatever. Um, and it seems to be like a thing that kind of like got itself like this 5% thing that got itself like, you know, wrapped around like a lot of rappers. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into this and see like how it started and like where it came from. The five percent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is really just a lovely song. Um, it's a very honest uh, song from Ghostface Killer, and you know, Mary Mary J. Blige is always like refreshing and lovely. Um, so I give it a four point seven five. All right, cool. Let's talk about the Soul Controller. Sink deep into the fog, big buffalo laws, Charles Mahal just got bang So as I understand it, this is supposed to be the album's closer based on what came out with the disc or whatnot. Sorry. On the vinyl, this would be like the album's closer. And then the next track was, according to Wikipedia at least, a bonus track that came on the disc. 
But then this particular track got in some issues with samples and then got kind of clipped and taken off the situation. And given the 90 seconds or so of samples at the end, and I'm pretty sure one of them is from Carlito's Way, which was relatively new at the time. So I can see how they may have had some issues with that. But uh, yeah, I, um, I couldn't really focus on what he was saying because the beat was so loud in the file I had. I don't know if it was just because it was poorly mixed copy or whatever, but I found it hard. The beat was just kind of odd to me. Like it was a little out there, a little bit not my favorite one, a little different. And then he's rapping, you know, yo, the streets got me backed out. How can I escape? How can I survive without bubbling weight? I thought that was a cool line, you know. He feels trapped in a corner. His only real options here is to, like, you know, sell crack because he doesn't really know how else to, you know, same kind of stuff. Um, and then what I thought was interesting is, like, he just kind of erodes into a point where, you know, he's kind of pointing out how people just aren't the same as they used to be. Like, brothers you knew for years is mad pussy and scare. Back in the days, UFOs couldn't walk up in here. It's time to mortar, travel like foul order. Clear my head, stay sober, the sole controller. Now, I think that there's some significance to the fact that he ends those lines with the stay sober part and then kind of, you know, has that third verse kind of referencing the woo and how they almost move it, etc. And you just feel like he's he's gaining control of himself and so all this five percent stuff it's like kind of helped to move away from like i understand he used to do angel dust and shit like that so like he's kind of moved to a point where he is not wiling out not being so crazy and able to really get a hold of his life and move forward in the direction he wants to be on um but let's pretend this is the album closer as i understand it the way those skits fucking play out are the way you end an album yep. i have never heard skits used in a way that made me feel like this is how you end an album so you have that scene of carlito's way being old talking about like surviving you yep. know and then if you've seen carlito's way uh or whatever it's it's just i just picture that scene so so you know he's talking about i was gonna die and he never thought he got to this place but he got there much later than he thought he'd be and he's like reminiscing and thinking back or whatever and then it kind of uh, cut and then he has that like last of the Mohicans line where you get the sense that he's like one of the last of this like purebred type of rapper this OG type person and then it cuts into the other little bits and I uh, from the usual suspects where it talks about how the devil the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is whatever and then he goes and then he disappeared and then if you just picture the album ending mm. with the vinyl and stuff like that is how you end a fucking album that was amazing but the mixing and the version I had, I felt the song was okay. I gave it a 4.25 otherwise. Yeah, um, so it is just, you know, him kind of saying, you know, you do bad things to get out of, like, a bad situation, but it only makes things worse, basically. Um, and, like, kind of like a creepy long song, you know, because it's, like, 6 minutes 50 seconds, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty long. Um, a creepy long song about, like, the struggles and, like, the choices you know, that you make in, like, the hood and, like, you know, in the, these types of situations, you know. And I think he's obviously speaking from experience. Um, so the end clips, you know, feature, you know, two different movies, I think. Um, and, you know, exactly what you were just saying about, like, him dying and about, like, the devil being around. So they're both kind of, like, interconnected. Like, they're both kind of, you know, like, talking about kind of, like, the afterlife, right? Like, dying and, like, you know, the devil and whatever. Um, so it was interesting. I did like the fact that it just ended the way, you know, like, you know, and just disappears, you know, like the way it was. But um, I did feel it was a bit drawn out. So um, I gave it a 3.5 on 5. Nice. I gave it a 4. I think that it was a really cool way to end the album if it's supposed to end this way. Um, <clears throat> the way that, you know, like we've all been saying, the way that it just suddenly ends with the devil disappearing. That was really cool. The vinyl stopped. The, you know, the record stopped. It was great. But what I also what I also enjoy about uh, this song was the the fact that he's like from what I understood he's he's trying to clear his soul by staying sober, and that that preaching to like looking for the better side of things, trying to be on a positive more note, and he's and he's taking these like different alternatives to try to stay sober, try to do better, to be better was a really great message and part of this. I left it out of four. All right, cool. And then there was what I saw was the bonus track, but is now track 16 on Spotify. Marvel. Long ways and fades, foreheads, finger waves, extensions, nails, Friday. Just How did you feel about this one, Chris? I liked it. Um, I don't, don't think I, I don't think I maybe understood it. I think that they were just. 
you know, giving out their best, do explaining um, what they're trying to do, drop in their wisdom like usual. I like the beat. I like uh, the way they came in and flowed it. It is, uh, from what I understand, it is everybody. It is the Wu-Tang Clan that's here. Like, there's more various artists that are doing it. Uh, there's not it's, just Ghostface. It's just Ghostface and RZA. Really? Well, it's, I it's completely, Marvel. I completely uh, did not catch that. How did, uh, how did you get nine people on this song? Because I felt like there was other voices on the song, like, in terms of just being there. But um, I left it at a 4.5. I think I, overall I do like the sound and enjoy it, but I'm just not, like, feeling the lyrics of it. Wait, wait. You gave it a 4.5. I like the song of it. I like the song itself and, like, what 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 I got from it. But at, at this moment, I just can't remember exactly. Like, this I is can't... literally one of the highest grades you've given this entire review. No, no I've given a 5. Ah, uh, five. One of the highest. And you're saying you don't know anything about the song? Not, a, not at this moment, no. Okay. Um. So, like, I mean, what I got out of this one was, like, it's kind of like him discussing, like, women and how they can kind of be, like, like dangerous and a bit of a trap, like, you know, especially if they get pregnant, um, you know, which is obviously, you know, not just the woman's fault. Um, and, like, there's a lot more kids that could be out there. He kind of mentions that, you know, except... You know, that a lot of women choose to have, like, abortions or, like, are maybe encouraged to have abortions as well um, so that the guys maybe don't get tied down. Like, you know, there's different things. Um, so I just thought that this one was, like, a really unique topic. Um, and it's not usually one that we hear much about, like, kind of, like, you know, it's, it's usually about, like, guys just getting involved with women. But then he's kind of like, you know, maybe don't because, you know, like, they could drag you down. It could be a trap. Um, and, but, you know, but... It drags on and on a bit, and, like, the actual singing part of the song, like, the entire, all the lyrics are done by, like, uh, two minutes, like, after the song's done. Yeah, and then it just goes. And then, yeah, the annoying goes. music, I just found it, it so annoying. Goes. It goes on for the next three minutes and ten seconds, and it's too much. Like, and for me, like, you it know, if this, it, yeah, it's just too much, and, like, this is not how I, I would want to like end it. an album, even if it is the bonus track, it's still, like, it's, like, I, you just want to like rip your ears out. Um, so, I, I don't want to go that far. Uh, but I, like, I gave it a three on five, just because I still enjoyed the topic and like the rapping, but like that really just dragged it down. Yeah, I mean, it was just it felt like it could have been clipped a minute earlier, and then it would have fit a little bit better. But thematically, the song's interesting. It's all about like how women are a temptation, right? Yo, black man, watch out. She saltwater trout. I'll do stugger back out inside a dugout. Heard the pussy was good, big, fell victim, mentally stripped him, one God turned Christian. Um, and you're just like, okay, so the woman is so influential that, like, the guys here, oh, her pussy's good. I got to go for that shit, you know? And then they get so caught up and so, like, into, like, like the idea of her, she consumes them to a point where they're able to like take what they believe in and literally change that, you know. And uh, in their minds, they're obviously, I, I think they're mostly Muslim if they're in this 5% or thing. So yeah. the idea of turning Christian is problematic, you know. She know magic, soaking wet pussy on the mattress, skin like Cleopatra, the leading actress. She'd been fucking since when she, we went to 14, you know. So it's kind of giving it a sense this is a game she plays. She'd been doing it a long time. She knows exactly what's going out, etc. And then Riza comes in and does another version of that, maybe a little more clean, a little speaking to a different audience, you know, like... We have Ghostface giving the blunt version for those group of people and then the other ones, you know, kind of representing them. maybe a different path where he's like, I really like when he's like, yo, gods, let me burn y'all the science about the womb. It's a black hole for those who lose control. Fertile soil and royal and wise and spoiled many men and took many lives. Loyal brothers changed sides, only bird the decimal compared to those who died inside. And he's kind of saying here, like, the uterus of a woman is an interesting thing if treated incorrectly and it's a bad thing it becomes a black hole of doom that sucks away your life and your probably your money and stuff and it gives you a bad situation on the other hand if you treat it respectfully and you don't do it you know so casually like you basically end up in a position where you get a good thing out of the situation and you know whatever so you need to be kind of respectful for it i thought it was an interesting song premise but i did not like the beat and the long beat yeah so i gave it a 3.5 on five 
I guess that's it for this this little album review we've done here. Um, what was your final grade? Uh, for the album review, I gave it a 4.514. I think this is really a certifiable classic album. It is like lyrical <laughs> prowess, um, intelligence, great use of vocabulary, excellent upbeat fast-paced punchy flows a couple little songs to deviate some storytelling one of those ladies jams like you get a really good well-rounded project i think with enough dif- different stuff that like makes it you know worth you know listening to uh, I, I would check it out i mean i think that it is an album that you have to sit there and you have to listen to and look up what they're saying and really focus on it if you just try to casually look at it it's gonna go over your head and you might have some trouble with it but it kind of brings it to the point of like for that lyric driven hip-hop it's a great example of what it's all supposed to be yeah um for me i mean like i feel like it's no surprise here um i gave it a 3.79 so uh, that's like a 75.876 percent um so for me it's not a classic um but you know i i don't know i just have never gotten into the woo or the woo members necessarily but this one was okay like it was better than the other ones i think um and uh, it's almost a classic. Let's just say that you know I didn't hate it. And there is it is a you know a great album with a lot of variety on there. There's you know if you want you know his if you just want killer raps, he can do that. If you want a story, he can do that. You know he's got this you know interesting mix of things that he does. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Um, I'm not saying like you know this one is better than any others, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a classic. My grade landed at a four point eleven. Um, I think it is a classic album. I think that I enjoyed uh, listening to the album and getting what I got from it. Um, not going to compare it to any other the Wu-Tang albums. They all have their individual type of um, <clears throat> representation, I guess if you can say. But that's pretty much it. I liked it. Okay. Uh, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate you being here with us. It's really cool that you would stick around like that. Yeah. Just want to give a special thank you to Mozart Mozart and Dill Williams, our patrons. Uh, the request raffle is actually coming up this week, so if you want to see us cover a particular album, you should check that out at Patreon and, you know, join us and uh, show some love. And if uh, that isn't your uh, cup of tea, feel free to hit that subscribe button, like, and uh, comment and all that stuff. I know it feels cheeky, but, like, you know, you got to say that these days. And uh, I do love your comments as you saw i started this by reading one you'll definitely correct us and have your opinions <laughs> and it will help us grow into something wiser for supreme clientele in the future on that note thanks have yourself a great evening everyone bye guys Bye-bye.